You're listening to SoFloRadio.com. What are they thinking about? Chartering a flight to the Isles of Langahan? It's the only strip joint book for promotion. Have you seen the pilot? Yes. He suspiciously resembles Tim Conway. I'll be right back, Pally. The laboratory's vacant. Oh. Can he fit in that? If he does, we're in trouble. Why? Too much stress. The plane can't handle it. Everybody's dead but us. Oh, great. At least we have George to guide us. He was raised in the untamed Northwest. George possesses the wisdom of surviving nature. <laughs> what do we do now, George? Well, if I know. Oh. But we have plenty of water and provisions if we use them wisely. Where'd you put them? They're right over here. Hey, who took all the... <sighs> I did it. You take all the water? That's right. And the pizza, too. What'd you do that for? Because I'm here... And it don't matter if you're here, too. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. Whoa, 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 whoa. By the way, sir, you don't understand it. Well, let's be a civil shepherd about this. Why? I needs to be comfortable. How's that? Well, you know who I am? Of course it's more important that I outlive you. Why, I'll have you know. <laughs> What's the big idea? We can idea? drink his blood and strip his hide for food. Now, see here. I ain't no delicatessen. You know who I am? I'm Mo Heaven and David. And I made my bones when you... <laughs> We can make a necklace out of his bones. Okay! Mm. All right, uh, welcome back to the dazzling bee spectacle of the Mohammed and David Show, where I work very, very hard to provide you with intellectual sport hall amusement. <laughs> Shut up, you chocolate donut dunker! <laughs> this is the big day when I drop the bomb. Oh boy, here comes the bomb! Now, <clears throat> it's my understanding that those muddlers homos down the hall don't know who I am, see? They think they got me licked. Well, they did get you raped. Shut your mouth. No! You know what you gotta do now, don't you? Kiss your ass. There you go. Kiss it. Which bone? Any yeah. of them. Now, kiss it. Okay. <sighs> All right. Now, where was we? Dropping the bomb. Oh, yeah. Well, actually, I got two bombs, you see. Yeah. As I like to call them, little boy and big boy. Just like the bombs that wiped out all them yips and slopes. Those bombs think they got one over on me? Why, I'll show them. Okay. All right, here's the first one. As it turns out, George ain't the only lover named George at this queer hat over here. No. No. You see, she has an affinity to guys named George. Oh. Sure. And where do you hear this? Now, yeah. I got this from a highly trusted source. Okay. <laughs> Give me some fanfare here, stupid. <clears throat> Our midday faggot friend had intimate affairs with George Maharis and George Nader. Yeah? Well, that's it. That's the bomb. Oh. You, you're so goddamn stupid. You know that? Yeah. Well, you ain't hard nothing yet. Okay. Now, here's the big boy. Okay. It just so happens Howard Stein is a very close and personal friend of mine. Yeah? Why, certainly. He's even gone as far as securing gumads for me, like that Heather brought on Fox News. Wow, really? Hey, let me tell you, she gave me full service. Hot wax on the balls, the works. So what about Howard, Bo? Huh? Howard. I told you not to call me that. <laughs> okay. Uh, anyway... <laughs> As a favor to me, Mr. Stein is having his team of crack bit writers rip that crap out of that pipe smoker down there with their own comedic stylings. Yeah, like this one right here. All right, just to get things started, roll it. Neil Rogers and George are the spick and the queer. The spick and the queer. The spick and the queer. Lesbians, vaginas, and, and the penis, penis size and balls. Size and balls. Penis, size, and balls. Lesbian, 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 Do 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 do
there's nothing on that hey how you doing welcome david how you doing Thank welcome you. and, I, and i'm Thank so you. glad that your name is david and you don't make me say david because i had a problem with that no, guy my name is speaking of people first things first you come in here you're hawking me a china asking me all these questions i didn't even have time for the facebook post so now i have to have uh jack do that got my yamaki on it should always be on it should always be well i'm always wearing a hat these days because i'm self-conscious about my hairline which i know which is the whole rationale if you don't talk into the microphone which don't, don't talk uh, the 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 retreating hairline, then of course the the mercifully covered by the yamaki bald spot that I have over here. But I I know because um, you know I asked God for um, and it, it wasn't like a, a direct wish. You know, we used to pray a lot when I was a Christian and ask for stupid things like, "Can I have wings?" You know, as a little kid, I wanted to have wings like Birdman, something. But God granted me my heart's desire, which was I wanted to go back and witness important events in history. I wanted to be able to time travel and witness, like, especially the first time that something happened. And, uh, and so God granted me that ability. And the yarmulke was one of those events that I, I was very curious about how that all got started. And? A bunch of old getchkis sitting around lamenting their bald patches, their bald spots. Oh, hey, bald spot. If only I had a piece of cloth, a, a shmata, if you will, that, uh, that would cover this. And why don't you wear a hat? It's like, ah, you know, I need a better excuse than to wear a hat. It's like, why don't we say that God wants us to wear hats, and then we got to wear this minimalist hat thing, which just coincidentally and conveniently covers the, the Friar Tuck bald patch Interesting. over there. And, uh, and, and it's a mitzvah. Never thought of it that and, way. And haven't you? That's, there's absolutely. And then, of course, the Catholics decided, hey... Just like, well, I mean, if we're going to rip off Judaism, we got to rip off the hat, too. Exactly. I mean, what's the point? We're not going to rip off all that kosher stuff because... <laughs> right, because that's too <laughs> tough. Because who needs that? Right. That's it. I don't know, I don't know how, if it's... You're not talking to the microphone or if you don't have enough juice over there on, uh, on Jack's end. But it's very important uh, that the audience hear you today. For David, sure. David is my rabbi. People don't believe me that I have a rabbi. For I, uh, for like twenty years already, at least. At least, uh, you know, I have a mezuzah on the door. I I have everything to show my uh, my sympathy for uh, the Jewish people, short of a circumcision. That's sympathy. The only th- my sympathy. My empathy. My uh, the word I'm looking for is my affinity. The the uh, relatability. The uh, I, I like I, got you. I like Jews, as opposed to Muslims. Now I don't dislike Muslims, but I dislike Islam. I'm not crazy about any of the Middle Eastern religions. As a matter of fact, um, I like Jewish culture, but I'm not crazy about about 
Judaism, the religious part, because um, the extreme. Know, it, it can be. It can be used. There's. There's. There are passages in the book y'all wrote that can be used by people who have ill will in their hearts to rationalize said ill will, and indeed it was seized upon. Upon speaking of the things that the Christians ripped off, the, you know that I want to rationalize uh, killing the Indians. You know, we've got the Bible for that. There's plenty of passages that rationalize killing in the Bible. Uh, but uh, but see, but now modern people, modern people don't uh, take that stuff literally. Uh, at Correct. Least the part about God says kill those people. It's like well, he didn't know, say that. For instance, right, eye for an right, eye, stuff like that. Right. It wasn't no, literal. not like that. I'm talking about what he told Joshua. He told Joshua kill those people. Well, he and, had to. And, and admonished them. He had he, to. He, well, he didn't have to. He did not. Have God to. told him. Well, no, but I don't believe that that, that happened. Okay. You know, I hear and you. I asked God, and he goes, "Nah, I never told anybody to kill anybody. That that's silly. You know, that would I would never do that. You know, and then, you know, we got all these jihads. You know, the the Muslims with the jihads, and I bring up the Muslims on this on this uh, very solemn in between two Jewish uh, holidays because of this kid with the bomb thing. Mm -hmm. And there's this. I, t I said that I would talk about it on Facebook. This post. How long has I got you for? Because I don't you, until uh, we got a good at least a half hour. Okay, if good. Because I don't want we'll to cut more. you short. Because I do want to. I just don't know who my who, who's I, the crowd I, that I'm talking to mostly here. Because you know, obviously, you I know, have my views. Goyim, you know, oh, I mean, great. It's the, it's this is the 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 fragments, the remnants of the Neil Rogers audience, the people that that uh, that didn't hate me. You know, during the Neil Rogers years, didn't hate when I filled in for Neil. Uh, they understand that I could. Uh, if I could, I would, uh, you know, uh, uh, do a voodoo ritual and resurrect zombie Neil. And that, well, he's been cremated, so that would be a tough one these days. Um, but people understand that, uh, I, you know, I would have had Neil live forever and continue to have been Neil's producer, sidekick, co-host, substitute host forever. Uh, you know, I didn't for want sure. to get but nothing lasts forever. That's that's Buddha. Where, did you bring this fly? In? No. Is this to, is that a kosher fly? Uh, I think so. That's going to... It goes together it's with the bagel be, and schmears. You know, we're going to set a little bagel trap. Thank you, first of all, for the wonderful schmears. Where did uh, this come from? Did we this, uh, owe someone uh, a plug? It came yeah. from uh, Bagels and More on Sheridan Street. Good friend oh, of mine. Right. Uh, I love that place. I used to. That was my first mail drop, the UPS store. Exactly. Right next door. First name basis with those guys. But my now, good friend Abe. We have a real uh, studio and a real physical address, so we're very, <laughs> we're very kosher uh, now, <laughs> if you will. But... Uh, David is here bringing us food. And, no, uh, no, that's not the reason that's I'm not here. The reason I'm here, here to see you because you're, you're, you're a here, long time we're friend. Here, we're long time friend. We we love each other. We've had uh, in 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 uh, one of the things that I love about uh, Jewish culture and Jewish tradition is the uh, uh, it's it's encouraged to uh, to discuss things for sure, including the scriptures. You can actually discuss the scriptures and uh, you know and, and and what God meant by that. Um, as as opposed to the, the Christians are very uh, dogmatic. It's like it says this, and that's what it is. And blah, 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 and, you we, know, abs and we absolutely don't act like that. You're In fact, second that, guessing those old Getchkeys from a long time ago all the time. And correct, that's, and that's great. That's listen. That allows room for growth. You know, room for adjustments. That's what that's what being a progressive is all about. If you stay locked into what ancient people wrote, I mean. Let's face it. People a hundred years ago didn't know what we know now. Correct. So, so there we have a saying changes, yeah. that there are seventy facets or seventy faces to the Bible. So everybody's okay. entitled to their interpretation. Right, yeah, now I might not like what the Reform guys are interpreting it. Right. But but we can still party for sure. See, and that's the thing. And 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 the the uh, we got we're in between two two holidays right now. Uh, you know, Happy New Year for thank of you all. so Happy much. Yom Kippur, uh, Shana Tova. Thank you so if much. If you will, uh, that's one that we already had. Right? We just that's had Rosh Hashanah other, last week. We're correct. on the other side of that, and now we're coming up to. We're in the period of what we call the ten days of repentance. So in oh, between okay. from Rosh Hashanah till Yom Kippur, we have so ten, this is, ten this days. Is Jewish Lent. Yeah. So this is ten will. days that you better intensify your religious what, what beliefs is, what or whatever, you, what, whatever what, what it is. What are we supposed to be doing right now besides davening a lot? Well, we're davening just, a lot. The audience knows this, uh, and it was during the whammy days. Uh, uh, David was the one that on television strapped me up with tefillin. Correct. And we had a, a live davening uh, demonstration. We did. Scene. It was around Halloween. I was uh, davening <laughs> for apples, as a matter of fact. You brought in a big bucket, and uh, I dunked my head in there. <laughs> I think he was waterboarding me. Now that I think about it, uh, but you're still a friend. But but still, if you're not one of us, I don't like. We it. love each other. Which that's the whole point that that you know I would like to make when if I if I may get sanctimonious is um, we all agree in the world. I believe this that that we agree about the actual important things. That uh, the arguments and the conflicts that we have in the world are usually over 
the not as important things. Minor or, details. Or, they're minor details. The flavoring, the minutia, the the cosmetics are the are the differences between us, and the cosmetics are. Uh, you know, for like the clothes that you wear, the food that you eat, or how you pronounce God's name is. Uh, I, I don't think those are good reasons to to have a fight. Not and at all. and the the things that we all have in common that we want, uh, you know, our children to be safe. We want our children to be fed. Uh, you know, we want to have good food, good water, free of disease, maybe high speed internet, things like that. I think that that pretty much everybody agrees on all those all those important points. Hundred percent. I mean, you know, we're maybe, all God's people. Maybe the Schwarzers don't agree. You know, we can just uh, say that because um, that... I don't. I don't think I've taught Jack enough uh, Jewishness, Yiddishness. Uh, uh, yeah. Well, Schwarzer is Yiddish, and it, it Schwarz, Yiddish. Me, Schwarz I, I, means I, black. I, I, and lately, I, I I've been it. told by some clients and friends that are black that. Don't use that word. So when I was younger, uh, we used the I, word Schwarz. My parents oh, said, hey, don't that was use that a, word. That was a Neil Rogers show was the argument whether or not Schwarzer is uh, derogatory. We didn't think and, so growing up. Sure. But I think that that the it's the intention behind it and the way that it is used, very much the way the word goyim is used, it's kind of like you don't use it when you're saying something positive. Correct. Like the butcher says, you don't want that, Ethel, that's for the goyim. Right. You know? Yeah, that's pretty he, negative. But it's know, the way so, we were brought up, let's say, right. in the 60s and 70s, and we talked about like that, and it was perfectly the, not oh, well, how about, derogatory. How, how about this one? You know, I go roller skating a lot. As a matter of fact, short show today because I got to take my daughter to a roller skating party. And I do mean got it. I do mean have to. I'm not unhappy about that. And I just talked to the general manager, me, and he said, yeah, man, whatever you want to do. I don't care. Yeah, so short show today. And you're, you're part one. Cool. Part two is going to be Flash. We're going to talk about the uh, medicinal marijuana benefit concert. But more on that. I won't be here for that one. But uh, if I said, if uh, we're going roller skating, you said, how about Saturday night? And I said, no, Saturday night, uh, it's too finster. Oh, so, so I was just about to say, yeah, when Schwarzer, beca- it's when it's Schwarzer hip- became passe. It's hip hop we- night. It's very finster. I am shocked it, that you yeah. know that. Are you kidding me? Now, finster- I, got, I got more Yiddish. The, the only people that know more, that I've, that I've met, that know more Yiddish than me, present company excluded, of course, are the Mike's Cigars people. They're Jubans, fluent in uh, English, yes. Spanish, Hebrew, and Yiddish. That's me. That's Beat what, that. That's, that's you know, you're, you're fluent in Spanish? And, and, and French. So, yeah, so, we got, so we got the five. You got some French there? So yeah. how do you say finster in French? Schwarzer. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's pretty Finster on a Friday so night, Finster too. Me- so Finster means 50, 50. dark. Sure, yeah, for the audience. And we also use the word know. tinkle. I didn't know the word tinkle. Yes. I mean, in that context. Yes, in that context. What is it, the... Oh, uh, same thing. Dark. dark. Tinkle means yeah. dark. So Ooh. we switched those, and then we didn't know what else to Secret. say. Like, you can't tell somebody, hey, you're a black, Secret you're a Schwarzer. you can use. Well, the thing, people um, misinterpret when they're overhearing Spanish people talking because the word is and has always been negro, which means black. Right. But that's... Yeah, what else are you supposed to say? It sounds like they're saying negro. And I was like, oh, that's... In Cuba, we have a very simple system. We have, you know, white, black, you know, blanco, negro, mulatto, Mm -hmm. in-betweens, all the in-betweens, indio, an Indian, you know, chino, the Chinese people. And uh, and judios, right? But the, got, yeah, but what do you mean judios? Yeah. We got judios in Cuba, but I'm I'm white. What yeah, but nevertheless, they're a culture. But you're telling you're you're separating a color culture. from a culture. Yeah, now. but wouldn't you? Wouldn't it's not a race. Wouldn't it's not a race. But nevertheless, but because I'm just talking about when when you that, see someone walking down the street. Yeah, no. yeah. It's only I mean, I'm a white it guy. Only, it only comes up, and so am I. But wouldn't so, a mulatto be an Indian? Um, a mul- no, because the Indians are Indians. The mulatto is half black, half white. Yeah, mulatto in in the U.S. Yeah, and you're not loud enough. Your okay. microphone is like I can barely hear you, and I want to. I don't want to hear on this. <clears throat> no, it specifically refers to. By the way, the Indians are the were the the rarest of all in Cuba. You know, the Spanish tried to genocide them, so there are uh, you know leftover Arawak Indians in Cuba, but they're the the most minor of the minorities. There are more judíos than there are, and the only reason, the only time that it would come up is if if it was obvious because he was dressed like a Hasid or something like that. Gotcha. Now, that would be the only reason it would come up. I don't regard Jews as a as a different race, uh, or Muslims. Like, we all bleed the, the same way, on the inside. Here's a, a, if you've been following the shows I've been lately, I've been very down on groups lately, and that's going to be my new thing going into the next half of my life is grouping. Read the foreword of a George Carlin book. It was like anti grouping. I, I argued with it at the time that I read it. I was much younger, and now I agree with it. I don't want to be grouped, and I don't want to group people. I'm an individual. Everyone's an individual. We're all I, human. I, I don't Same care, blood. I don't care about your group. You know, if you care more about your group than you care about 
the humanity. people that aren't a part of, of your group, then that's that's what bigotry is. And that's uh, the Holocaust. That's, that's the root of it. That's, that's the root of it. It's my group and your group. It's like, no, no, there are no groups. If you want to put yourself in some arbitrary group, that's that's your business. But I'm not acknowledging that grouping. And uh, please don't group me. I'm part of the uh, people who have You're part of the human race. Live in Hollywood group. Right, yeah. That's, that's and it. And that's and all you everybody. should be. So, uh, uh, what is, so what's the next holiday that we're, uh, that we're coming up on? So the next holiday is Yom Kippur, which is our... Okay, and we just had Rosh Hashanah, we're coming up on Yom Kippur. Yom Kippur, yeah. which is our day you of atonement. You said Yom Kippur, I thought it was Yom Kippur. So people accent. say Yom Kippur, which is, would be like K-I-P-P-U-R. <laughs> Growing okay. up, more, the more Yiddish accent would be Yom Kippur. Okay. Like why K-I-P-P-E-R. I, I want to be correct. I don't want to offend anybody. Except maybe the Haitians. Either, either. I mean, you know, I don't care about offending the Haitians. It's Fuck an you, George. <laughs> it's an either, either thing. Oh, I the, thought he was Jamaican. Why? Why Haitians can wear dreadlocks? Oh, was well, it dreads? You just yeah, no, because yeah, I said dreads. Yaman when I came in and he, he said didn't Yaman. Acknowledge he thought you were a Rastafarian. That was racist. Just because he's black and smokes weed doesn't make him a Rastafarian. I don't smoke weed. Okay, I I do. I smoke his weed. No, you didn't no? get it. I'm gonna. Yeah, he's I'm going to. Anyway, so back to Yom Kippur back to or Yom, Yom Kippur. Kippur or the Day of Atonement or our holiest day of the year. Is this uh, where we get to sacrifice animals? No. No. Okay. <laughs> That oh Cause, actually actually because let let's take a step uh, back. Yeah, right. The morning of Yom of Yom Kippur or Yom Kippur, which is going to be Tuesday morning, because okay. we're fasting from Tuesday night to Wednesday night. It's a twenty five hour fast, and when you say fast wow. to people, like I'm in the bank, they say, "Oh, you're fasting this week." I'm like, "Yeah." They go, "But you're allowed to drink." I'm like, "No water, no, no food, no drink. Nothing enters no in the mouth. We don't even oh, brush our okay. teeth. So it's twenty five hours." But in Florida, if you just take a deep breath, that's kind of like a drink. Almost, you know, you the go humidity. Outside, <laughs> yeah, you're getting But we're some. really not outside because we're walking from the house to the synagogue. We're in the synagogue right. 15 out of those 25 within hours. Within the confines of the Erev. Within the confines of the Erev. Yeah. I, listen, but Ex- all I got to do is is just take the, the class for formality's sake. and uh, you'd, you'd be a home run. And get the Snip, a little snip. And I have Scythe the Knife, who in fact was just calling out. me. I, really? The Moyle from Hollywood. I hope he's tuning in, because Scythe the Knife is the designated Moyle of the Neil Rogers Show. This is show, the son now, of the original well, Scythe the Knife. So he's Scythe the Pocket Knife. He's <laughs> Scythe the Pocket Knife, <laughs> a.k.a. Howie. I don't know if he's listening, but he was a huge Neil Rogers fan. It'll be on YouTube and, uh, you know, and uploaded for, for sale later, because you know, I, I sell my podcasts. Really? Yeah. So I well, should you know, get it for free to cause, skip cause to Scythe the Knife. It's part of my whole Jewish sympathy thing. Empathy. I'm, I can't find the way right to make word. money. You what, know, <clears throat> a way to make money, you mean? Yes. It's a way to. It's actually because the shows are on YouTube for free. So people go, hey, you're charging for the show. Go watch it on YouTube for free. Exactly. You know, you schnorrer. You know. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no, not, not you. Not I'm racist? talking about that's, that's for the audience. Yeah, oh, exactly, audience. George, really. Yeah. So now you're. Insert foot to mouth. Jack. If I, if, listen, if I say Jack, something. Is Jack a Haitian name? Sure, Jacques. 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 Oh, Jacques. Jacques. No, Jacques. I'm Jack. He's Block Jacques Chalac from the cartoons. I'm Jack JCK. <laughs> but Jacques, yeah, it's pretty Haitian. Yeah, I mean, Jack in every Pala language. Coyote. Isn't there a That's Jack? like George instead of Jorge. Right. They prefer George. Sure. But uh, he was born in America. He's America. A, he's American. Okay. He's a American. An American Haitian. Of Haitian descent. He's an I'm American as, of Haitian descent. I'm as Haitian as George is Cuban. Actually, I'm more Cuban than he is Haitian. Because you're older. Because I was actually born in Cuba. So well, it just yeah. But you're you know, not. So I'm just it, a it Jewish American. It, did, it didn't take. Yeah. Well, Americans are all sorts, which is which gets me back to the uh, to the Muslim thing. That kid that built the uh, the clock bomb. Did you see that story? Yes. It spawned a hilarious argument on my Facebook page. That I, I've, if I didn't have such a tight schedule, and maybe I will late, uh, read it later, but I promised the Neelys out there that I would tell the Mo story. That's why I got that Mo bit that I started the show with, including my favorite uh, Boca Brian Mo thing, the Mocus Mucus, because uh, mm-hmm. I love Hocus Pocus by Mocus. So I, I promised that, but you saw that Muslim kid, because I've got this whole idea about how to deal with the Muslims. It's a little bit different than your people's approach, just a little bit. A what do you mean, different. my people? Like well, Israel? What do you mean, your people? Yeah. You know the what Jews because is... the, the, the fighting that y'all have been doing. Well, have you been to Israel lately? Like I've been not nonstop. Lately. Not lately. Not lately. I was there two months still... ago, three months ago, four times last year. When my last, last time I checked, y'all were still at it. Last time I checked. Well, I, mean, I, I haven't looked at the newspaper lately, but last time I checked, you're all still. We're not at it. it. We're okay. just responsive. Sure. Well, that's, that's now the that's reason why my son right. Shmuel, who's actually 21 today, happy birthday! Happy birthday, Shmuel! Really, that, that little kid is 21. I know, it's amazing. Who was a special forces paratrooper in the war last year in the Middle East? Mm-hmm. 
He could he could tell you stories. I'm, I'm sure. Well, I can listen about defending you, himself, not being the aggressor. You don't have to see. I don't like Islam, and I don't like it, it, you know what what uh, it represents. What it represents it means but, kill everybody but, but our I own. Have, but I have. Uh, I know that's written in there. But you know they kind of they plagiarized that. They kind of took that. <laughs> they kind of took that from from dad, from the grandfather. Mm-hmm. They, they took that from Abraham and the, and the stuff that his children wrote. I mean, that's the worst. Besides that he was a pedophile, Muhammad. Um, he was a plagiarist. You know, he copied the Old Testament. As a matter of fact, he, he you know, like, like the Christians, they took, you know, Christianity, they copied the Old Testament and kind of went, yeah. And kind but of who, was, who founded Christianity and Catholicism? Well, I mean... One of the, one, a top Jewish get, rabbi. Get, yeah, sure. Judaism. So, but I have a theory. That. I have a theory about what because the, there are a lot of Muslims go roller skating. In case you didn't know, they're there all the time with their heat with their headdress. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and um, and I'm nice to them. This is my how to conquer Islam. All right, kill them with kindness. I'm I'm being nice to them. I'm proving the mullahs wrong because the mullahs. See, here's the thing about the Middle Eastern religions. They all have a built-in persecution con. Uh, persecution complex both founded and unfounded because in all three cases they have been persecuted and persecutors throughout history there has been a lot of that going okay going we'll along. agree to disagree but you, the, you, the, you know where that of, stuff spawns from the book of joshua is you know it was written by your own people it was pr- pretty bloody persecution okay. of the people that were indigenous there and i didn't well, write that you fight me i'm gonna fight you back well no but you understand but that was an invasion man they crossed the river the nomad that's when y'all were wandering and you crossed the river and started having at them. 31 city-states between Moses and Joshua were genocided. Mm-hmm. And that's not according to me. That's according to the books. Okay? I that's what's it. in there. So there was, there was a lot of back and forth. And the people who were the neighbors at the time would have said, Hey, man, we're defending ourselves from Joshua and these invaders. So there's been a lot of a back and forth going on throughout history. Okay. Uh, so we can move but, forward to but today. The, but the religious leaders that are the hate mongers, they like to look like today. The Christ, like, do you believe, do you feel that Christianity is under attack in America? Because they do which is a, a lot of hogwash. Right. Christianity is not under attack in America by anyone except possibly Bill Maher right. and me, but that's, that's not even... That, that's over, an overly simplistic way of explaining to it. I'm, I'm anti-religion, not anti any specific right. religion. Although Agnostic. I think some are more uh, insidious than others, but I'm specifically against the concept of one man telling another man what God thinks and what God wants. I automatically consider that guy a liar, and that's what religion is. It isn't about a, the personal relationship that you have. It's about... Uh, agreeing with or believing what another person has to say about the divine being. Okay. And, when, and whenever I hear a guy say that he has a message for me from God, I'm saying, well, God told me that anybody that approached me with a message from him was a liar. Correct. Okay? Yeah. I, I don't no, need no you. No prophets these days. I don't need you. No prophets. And I don't believe that there were prophets in those oh, days. I believe were. that there were a so, bunch of getchkis making up a bunch of No, horses. not at all. Well, but, but, that's, but we still love each other. Of course. See? And the Muslims, this is my take but that's the, the But that's what they hate. My message so, of peace. Right. Yeah. So the Muslims because, is, you don't agree with me? You're right. a dead man. The, well. And that's what they inculcate into those kids. If you children, go on YouTube. Their children are there at the roller rink. If you I go, if you go on YouTube. I know, man. And go, do a search. Nursery, preschool. Yeah. They're inculcating them and telling them, kill the Jews, the Jews are bad. We don't I, do that I, in our I, Hebrew I, schools. I know. But you know. Uh, and that's how I, they grow I, up. Read, I was on Wikipedia reading the writings of the Stern gang, you know, the, the predecessors of the IDF. And like, I was a little bit offended as a goy. A little bit offended Why? by what they wrote because we're a canonized people. It's, 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 it was very bigoted. It was very anti goyim man. It was very, you know. So we have the smallest yeah. little country in the world, and they have know, everything around it's not it. They, that's, that's it's not one people. It's not they. That's like saying that's like if the Cubans said we want Dade County, or we're going to make it New Cuba, and the rest of America would say no. And Cuba Israel say, was gifted you got to the us. Whole thing. It was gifted to Abraham and his descendants. Correct, but that's them too. Correct. The, so treat it with respect. I, absolutely. See, that, that would be... And you, you know my phrase, by the way, copyright. My copyright phrase that I've been saying for years. The children of Abraham should be at each other's table, not at each other's throats. Correct. So my strategy for solving the, uh, the, the Muslim thing because this, uh, this is all inspired because of that kid with the bomb. Did you see that? Did you I see saw bits and yeah. pieces of it that Obama like, was happy Texas. with it or whatever. But it's Texas, this kid. 
builds a, a clock and it looked like a, a suitcase bomb to the teachers. Like they know what a suitcase bomb exactly. looks like. And they call the cops. And the and so it's back and forth. And there's this huge argument on my Facebook page, man. Friend me on Facebook. It's Facebook.com forward slash the George Rodriguez. Facebook. And then read the the argument that's going on. And by the way, the argument that's going on are from like minded individuals. It's 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 hysterical. It's crazy. <clears throat> But the big thing is the the thing that I posted that started it all was a discussion that was like a, a, a Twitter discussion or something between people or some chat thing where they, the people pointed out that at no point did they call the bomb squad, uh, did they uh, evacuate the school, did right. they... Right, the you protocol know, that they should have done. Sure, if they genuinely thought it was a bomb, they would have opened up the suitcase and got, oh my goodness, what the hell is this, everybody out. Like, that's what, immediately, right? If we were in, in any school in the country... And I opened up a, a, a lunch pail, a briefcase, and, 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 and it was a bunch of hot dogs with tape around them attached to an alarm yeah. clock. They would have evacuated the freaking school. Of course. Right? But no, they didn't. They just had this kid arrested and taken to jail. Yeah. This, the school the administrators did. Because he's a little dark-skinned Yeah, I was just going to say, kid what color? From uh, an African brand. Well, one of those, like Somalia or one of those mm-hmm. things. So he's a little dark-skinned Muslim so boy. So it's just assumed. So, yeah. So this feeds into what these hate-filled mullahs are accusing the rest of the world. The, these hate-filled mullahs say that if you're not a Muslim, the devil, the rest of the world that is controlled by the devil, devil is going to try to kill you and that's why you have to kill them first correct this is their rationale and sadly there are people that believe that so my people, big philosophy all of them a lot for, the, of, for the most <clears throat> for the most part i don't want to no i'm not generalizing group them. i'm not grouping them we but go for the to most the roller part. rink we go to the roller rink and there's moms with their kids and they're wearing the hijab but did you ask them do you ever have a, a real discussion I say, with them if it comes up no i well, I, I allow because I don't just walk up to people at the roller rink and start talking to them. Like if, there are a lot. You of did people, when I was there. There are a lot of roller rinks. <laughs> I did. I to me, to you. Yeah. Oh, okay. There are a lot of people that go to the roller rink that are wearing yarmulkes, which is funny because I should take my. They don't allow hats, but the yarmulkes they allow. So I'm thinking I'm going to wear, wear your yarmulke. Get a bigger I'm one. Wear my yarmulke. Get like the soup bowl. Well, one. This is why I want to convert for real because I don't want to be pretentious. I don't want to be wearing my yarmulke as a, as comedy. You, you know what oh, I mean? Oh, so that's what I, you're doing now? I mean, absolutely. No, no, no. See ya. No, you understand. Of you understand. I understand. You get the you. joke. Oh. You get the joke, but I'm not, I don't want to offend people at the roller rink. I don't want people at the roller rink to think that I'm doing anything in, in, a, in a mocking manner. So if the Muslims are sitting near me and, and the occasion arises to talk to them, even if it's just to say, excuse me or something, I say, assalamu alaikum, and they get all shocked. Like, how do you know like, that? Oh, my God. One time a lady said, are you a Muslim? And I said, no. And she goes, do you believe in God? And I said, and I said, what I, what Which I don't, one? I said, what I don't believe in are prophets. She said, okay. I mean, she, she pulled did, out she a knife did, and came at me. She didn't get it, She pulled out a knife and came at me. She didn't get it. I don't think she got it, but nevertheless, it stopped it. it or shed, P-R-O-F? Is that a P-R-O-F or a P-R-O-P-H? The, the other one. I believe in the, in the uh, F-I-T, not uh, P-H-O, yeah. I got you. I got that you. one. But I really believe that if we are going to end that what this 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 cycle of hate this the the that they're being taught, we need to prove the mullahs wrong by by being nice to them and showing them that they don't freak us out and that the, what happened in Texas with the kid with the bomb it is is fuel for them. That the the mullahs and the uh, you know and the extremists are like you see there you can't be a Muslim in America you see there they'll never accept you. This is the kind of shit that they're going to be right because they're taking they're one be, instance of, of course and the they other ninety nine out and of by the hundred because the whole thing with the grouping. You know, a group always has a leader, and it always benefits the leader. The group benefits the leader. When people, the the biggest nightmare, the biggest fear that a group leader has is that people will leave his group, and his group, Jim will, Jones. Dis- his group will dissolve. Yep. So everyone who is the leader of a group, it has a has a vested interest in maintaining the group. And how do you maintain? No matter the group? what. No matter what. So you maintain the group by telling your group that they'll never be part of another group, that the other people outside of the group will never like you. You have to, if you want love and acceptance, you have to stay here with us within this group. You can never leave the group or, or they will be bad to you. And sometimes that actually happens. You know, these Muslims go to Texas, first of all. What the fuck are you doing in Texas, Muslims? They go any place they, I can, know, they can go. I know, I know. It's like the Jews. You know, y'all did that. You went all over the world, didn't you? They're everywhere. Where aren't they? Montana. 
Oh, there are some in Montana. I admit, not in my town. Not in Libby, Montana. I got the funny thing. I showed Jack, right, about the black people in Montana. I should post that on Facebook, too. Uh, but that would be funny. You know what? There are I, would love, I would love to bring the first bu- uh, busload of Jews to Libby, Montana. I, I will drive that bus. I will help. I could be your tour guide. I maybe. will help build the first synagogue in Libby, Montana. How do you know there isn't one already? I know because I used to live there. Trust me, there are no secrets in that town. There are no secrets in that town. We even knew where the only black man lived. I don't think he's around there anymore. <clears throat> I think they finally found him. <laughs> Sorry, escorted I believe, him out. I believe in um, in love and acceptance. I believe that what would freak out Muslims the most is if. Uh, like really orthodox looking Jews did things like come to their defense in cases like this, you know, like like some really orthodox lawyer take up this kid's case or something like that, you know, because that would blow these mullahs' minds. Can you know you know what? I don't think so. You don't think so? I don't, I don't think so because okay. we do things with kindness all the time. You go to Israel where yeah. I am all the time. Okay. You see Arabs on Israeli buses 100% of the time. I've yet to ever see in all the years, in the 45 years that I've been visiting that country, a, a Jewish person on an Arab bus. They have, just, they have segregated just, buses? They have buses in their areas. Oh, okay. And it just doesn't With, happen. It just okay. doesn't happen. Is it for fear? Do you who, think who, for fear? Yeah, for, for, for sure for fear. Who are, the, who are the people that you see bombing the other place? The human bombs. Have you ever oh, yeah. seen a Jewish wow. person as a human bomb? No, I've seen no. a Jewish person in an F-16 fighter and a helicopter Defending gunship, themselves. Defending themselves. Leveling a building. Defending themselves. And that's what my an son had to do for 16 though. days last yeah. year, and I was panicking every day of those 16 I'm, days because sure his life panicking. was in, in the balance. But uh, Defending. I mean, I, I, I We're on defense. I understand that that's the... That's the the point of view uh, that of you have, but uh, but uh, other people have a different have a different point of view. They feel that they're defending a, a colonial invasion and encroachment. So when bombs you know, are tossed and we yeah. just defend, well, that's that they would say, no, no, we're defending ourselves from uh, from bombs. tanks, from tanks and helicopter gunships. They, they and never F-16 they never come fighters. in unless they do. I mean, that's and, obvious. You know, so, and the few and, and the few Muslims for years. or ISIS guys that have left the fold and yeah. have gone out to speak that have like their life in the balance because people are going to come loud enough, man. Is that people are going to come. Tr- Hello. There we go. <laughs> so those that have left the fold that have come out and speak and I've heard them, mm-hmm. it's amazing. Yeah. Because they're guys that are, and, they're, and they have their sides, life in the balance. Because I told you, you know, when you did those shows with Queen Esther, who's one of my Facebook friends, we're still in touch. Uh, I'm like throwing gang signs out to uh, to Queen Esther, who was raised there. You know, and I did those series of show, but she's on the left wing side. She belongs to. Uh, Jews for Peace in, uh, Ooh, in Israel and Palestine. She's the granddaughter of a Holocaust survivor. Interesting. She's fluent in, in Hebrew and and Arabic, and she's she's pro peace. She blocks bulldozers with the orange vest. Interesting. And, and uh, she goes on. She used to when she lived there. She would go on the um, uh, what they call called the well watchers. They protect the uh, the Palestinian wells from Correct. the IDF coming and pouring concrete. But she know, you, but you know they kill so, they'd kill her in a heartbeat if they had to like Ger- I, like I in Germany. I don't know that at all. Okay. I don't know that at all. See, because that sounds like that sounds like a prejudicial statement. Not that at all. Like a grouping statement. Not at do all. Do you think that there are even as small of a percentage as it might be? Do you believe that there are um, people is Islamic people out there, Palestinians out there that uh, don't have hate in their one hundred percent? I believe. Do you, do I believe, you believe that, that they, yes. they, they exist? Yes. So that's a seed, right? That that we can nurture and we can we can. Give water and sunshine to those seeds and, and watch that grow. And but support, we haven't for thousands of years. that concept. There's a concept of, you know, like yeah. Esau and Jacob, the, t- the two twins that were born. Right, one of them it was says, ha- Esau ha- hates Jacob. Hairy. That's just the way it He's is. A hairy, woolly yes, guy, man. Exactly. <laughs> so that's just the way Esau. it is. So you have your smile, <laughs> and that's just the way I, it was. I re- but, but I believe there's hope. I believe there's, there's hope. There's always hope. And we've yeah. given back land, and we've bent over backwards yeah, and done everything we can. Hope. Yet we're just slapped back in the face. I, I, you know, there's there are two sides to every story. Hundred, I'm just giving, I'm just but giving my I, side. I, 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 I know. Of course, there are two. Well, sides. you know, one of these days, uh oh, uh, uh, we ought to we ought to have a couple of people in here. And I don't know, like I'm, you know, here's 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 my be me being prejudiced. <laughs> here's me being prejudiced for the two sides. It would be like you and Queen Esther. A no, Jew, See, a Jew and another I'm Jew. Not, I'm not do that. Here's That's like black on a, black crime. And another Jew. Sorry, Jack. And, uh, yeah, you gotta. Well, I'll take it. I have enough problems, you know, over here with Jack without you helping. Um, I was just giving an example. I like, because okay, like, it's like a, Jew on a Jew, Jew, a, a, Jew a, a, a Jew and another Jew to discuss Middle East peace. <laughs> That's fair, right? It happens all the time. But <laughs> I know it ain't going to be me. No, so I would have to have uh, a Jew and a Muslim. 
How's that? Maybe you know it for it to be perfect, uh, an Israeli and a Palestinian. Like, yeah, I'm not Israeli. On, I mean, on, I just speak the language. Visa, right, on visa here or something like that, and, and, uh, and, and watch the fun. You know, when I did those shows with Queen Esther, I had no idea that there was going to be as much of a, f- a hue and cry fallout. She was getting people, the, people were calling up, giving her death threats right there, right there on See, the air, right there on the air. Yeah, and they weren't, they weren't Muslims. Passe. They weren't Muslims, right. you know? People, like old ladies were calling up, you're not a Jew, you're not a Jew. Anger. Hey, yes, because she was saying some things. We that, live in a democratic that I, society, that I, that don't I, we? That I'd never heard of before. Indeed. Well, who? What? Israel? Maybe. No, he, here. Not here. No, no. This is an oligarchy. You know that. Really? Yeah. The Koch brothers. Uh, so, what was that debate know, the other night? Isn't everybody entitled to their own remember, opinion? Remember Frank Zappa said that politics is the entertainment division of the military industrial True. complex. True. All right. That's the dog and pony show. Bernie, and I'm going to talk more about Bernie when Flash shows up because Flash is a Bernie fan, uh, as indicated by his Facebook postings. So I'm very excited about um, <laughs> Bernie's going seeing, nowhere. And that's the only problem. I don't believe that. And by the way, not I, the look, Donald. Look, speaking, no, no, it's going to be Bernie. It's going to be Bernie. Even I posted a thing. I reposted a thing. An evangelical Christian spoke. Uh, positively about Bernie on the heels of his, uh, he was talking about Bob Jones or one of these universities, and he was, and he says, I caught myself. The guy, the guy, the the story that I posted goes, I caught myself sitting in my chair, you know, scowling with my lips pursed. Who is this? Who is this disheveled Jew to tell me to preach to me about morality and feeding the poor and this and that? And he says, I caught myself because that's exactly what Jesus was. That's exactly the, why Jesus got in trouble is because mm-hmm. he went against the establishment and told rich people they need to take care of poor people. That's right. And, and, and all these things. And so he wrote this piece about how embarrassed at himself he was because he goes, here we go again. With with a, a messy haired Jew, uh, you know, shaking shaking things up and rocking the boat. I love Bernie. I love Bernie Sanders. I'm gonna, as a matter of fact, in in typical Cuban tradition, right? And I'm gonna get some of my dead relatives <laughs> to vote for Bernie Sanders. I'm gonna dig them up, like we say in the synagogue: <laughs> so, vote early and vote often. Vote early and vote often. Well, the Cubans <laughs> have certainly taken that to a whole new. Uh, maybe they learned it from the Jews. Could the be. Cubans have taken that to a whole new level. Bernie fills my heart with hope. Um, I love it. And the fact that he's Jewish is like not even being discussed. Not even being discussed. So far. He, so far. It's, it's freaking, pe- he's freaking people out uh, on a variety of other levels. They haven't even bothered to get down to that. Oh, by the way. Yeah. yeah the, oh, by the way something. Yeah, he's one of us. No, he's Jewish. I, I think that's great. Why the hell not? Why, why the hell not? It just won't happen. I mean, no. you, you, you're, you're, a, you're a negative Nelly. I'm, I like Trump. He's his. You're, you're, his daughter and grandchildren are yeah, Orthodox Jews. His daughter and grandchildren are Orthodox Jews. You're, you're kidding about that. You're not going to vote for Donald Trump. The, the, he's a businessman. The, I'm a businessman. He's he's a he's a he's a con artist. He's a gangster. He's a mobster. And he, what's he, everybody else on that he panel? Wor- he worships the, he, the. They're not Bernie Sanders. That's who they are. I, I don't believe you're going to vote. Is it, Huckabee is, also, is it just but because Huckabee's you, not going to make you it? Hate, Huckabee you, loves, is it, loves is it be, Israel. Is it because you hate the Mexicans? Like Donald that. Trump, he doesn't talk about Israel. He talks about China. China, 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 China. He loves China. Yeah. Yeah, you're not really going to for Donald Trump. I love Mexico. Donald Trump does not. He wants to build a big wall there. Uh, as long as I can fly yeah, into Yeah, I know you're, a big, Lucas, fan, you're a big fan of walls. I know that. You know. That's my fa- that's, that happens to be my number one spot in the world. <laughs> the wall? Yeah. <laughs> I'm not my... talking about the whaling wall. I'm talking about that, that big <laughs> dividing wall that's actually a, a zone. A no, big wall zone. I'm talking zone about the whaling western. <clears throat> okay. You think it has magic powers? Uh, no, that, but it's... Do you take your harpoon when you go whaling at the whaling wall? No, but <laughs> that's my meditation place. You, uh, they have harpoon guns now. Yes, you they know, do. They're air power. Yes, they do. And everything like that. The Japanese... One day you'll go there with me, arm in arm. I, one day, I would love to, one of these days. One of these days. I've got to get a lot of things uh, in order over here. You know, I'm still going through my big life change. I'm still readjusting financially to the new, this new scheme which it's is the scheme What's of the hers. Scheme? Uh, I, I get to pay child support and still all of the uh, child's expenses. I'm getting I'm getting shafted. Is what's going on? But my options are spend the money here or spend them or give it to a lawyer. This you time could, you could take my Jewish lawyer and I, I, you uh, know this, defense is, you this is why uh, why I'm in the predicament that I'm in. And and this is no sarcasm. Is I had a, a Cuban lawyer. 
and I'm not lying. There's your problem. Alex, you faker, fucking faker. Everything that he told me was wrong. Everything that he told me was wrong. He couldn't have done a worse job if he did it on purpose. As a matter of fact, now in retrospect, I'm not convinced that they weren't all in, on it, her. in yeah. on it together. Wife, wife had a Jewess. So that's of, what I have. I have a Jewess, the number one yeah. person in South Florida. No, uh, and and I got I got this guy, and he said that he would, you know, uh, it was a bargain because I was I was trying to spend as little money Cock as and possible. And I swear to God, that during the mediation, they just sat in a room, the two lawyers and the mediator, and went, "No, well, he's the only one with any money. So if anybody wants to get paid, we need to we need to write it up this way. We need to rule this way, and everybody gets their chunk." Including the mediator, I get this, and mm-hmm. you get that, and exactly. she gets that, and the lawyers get this, and that's and it. They laugh and, about and you, and you get the shaft. Yeah, they laugh about it. They're all chummy. That's when my joke. Every day we're going into court, and before we go in there, all of the lawyers are all, you know, uh, doing secret handshakes and, and throwing each other ha- gang exactly signs. Exactly what I say in all, in and all those cases. Yeah, it's it's them. They're 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 golfing together. They're at the same restaurants, at the same dinner exactly. parties. Exactly. I call them, them crankers because at the end of yeah. the day, they go home and they and they just say, "How much more can we crank, yeah. George? How crank, much more money can we crank?" Well, they got it. They got you know, it like all. The mon- you know, like the monkey. They the, used to, you know, back in the day that they used to the, do the crank. The That's only money that I got to keep was the money that I had already blown, and I'm very <laughs> proud of how much of it I tore through. You know, so you got a little bit of satisfaction. I got a little bit of satisfaction uh, that you know, I I, di- I didn't put the money in a big pile and set my and set it on fire. You know, I, I would have rather than let her have it. But um, there's always safe deposit box. You know, I had a few oh, nice. I, you know, I just had a few nice meals and. Uh, and That's it. That, yeah. In, in went, went out drinking a lot. Like in Italy. I, I, I had a drinking problem there for a while while I was going through all of that. Really? Because anger. I was managing my anger with alcohol. I didn't know that. That was how I was keeping myself from getting arrested. It's like if I'm too drunk to move, I won't, I go, won't, kill, I won't go kill her. And it worked like a charm. But hey, all better now. All sober. Not drinking anymore unless it's a, somebody's party somewhere. There has to be an occasion. That's no why I brought you Dr. Brown's. I didn't Thank you, you Dr. Brown. Heineken. I'm not drinking sugar. I'm going to give those to oh. Jack, though, but bless your heart. Thank this is you. Jewish soda. This is Lower East Side I, kind I, of stuff. I know I don't drink the sugar drinks anymore. I'm eating lots of vegetables. I'm not... I'm not gym? white. Going to the gym? Uh, I go skating. I'm going skating today. I go skating yeah, three times a week. You need other stuff you know, besides they, that. they took the physical. I exercise every day with my pull-ups and my sit-ups and everything. I don't like the gym. I don't like the smell. I don't like the scene. I skate. See, you have, you've seen me skate. See, yeah, when I good, skate, I skate hard. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, I get a, I get a sweat going yeah, that over doesn't there. build biceps. No, it doesn't. My, my pull-ups and my, okay. my, my push-ups do. I lost the weight in the divorce. The dumbbells. <laughs> I, seriously, I lost I lost them in the divorce. <laughs> I got the refrigerator. It's in there. You just busted got the me washer out. dryer. <laughs> <laughs> you just busted me it's out. It's true. I'm serious. I'm serious. Wait, who that. got that beautiful get, house on the water ones? that I that I came to once the, or the, twice? The bank, yeah. The, the bank took that. I traded my boat for a Michael Kors watch. That, and it's completely not my style. See, I like that. See, you know what this was? Silver. What was that? Okay, this is, is a just a fos- this is just a fossil. Okay. But not just it's a plain fossil. Not, okay. My son sent it to me when he was in the army in Israel for Father's Day. Oh, so, what a nice guy. What a mensch. Th- remi- every time I wore it, it just reminded me of him. A, a, a mensch of a young man. A mensch of a young man. He, he is. Exactly. Am I, am I, have I uh, exhausted all your time? Because it's... Uh, if you need it, more, I mean... It's 12... You, it's, can, you can suck up a few more minutes. It's I mean, 12 you don't have to go one. to break. I, just, I didn't want to make you, you late for something. Break. You said you had to pick up a but kid I, or something But I actually like that. changed my schedule I around. had this arrangement with the management of this radio station. Yeah, that. I take breaks whenever the hell I feel like it. I'll, I'll yeah, take but a, what I'll, pays the bills. That a little bit, but uh, other things too. You know, I have the prostitution in the other room over here. Do you want to take advantage of the prostitute while you're here? On I don't the way pay out? for it. Okay. But I won't get one free. Yeah. I don't pay for it. I, I know. Well, kind of. You're married. You know. Well, I that's a true. It. You're you're. Uh, what, you, oh, that's yeah. right. Because you're you're a stud and you have a giant penis. No. That's what I, I saw that on the bathroom wall at Churchill's. Size, size nine, and I'm Jewish. So yeah, is it, is, is equals. That, they get Jack. Can you explain it's that? The to him? What does that mean? It's the you yarmulke. explain it to him. See what it is is a uh, uh, gold digging bitches in South Florida see mm-hmm. the yarmulke and immediately presume that he has money, Cha-ching. and they have sex with him in the hopes that they're going to get some. Some what? So I should, some or some, some cash? Some money. Some of that and some money too, you know? Yeah, it's just, just really shallow. Trust me, you take that yarmulke off and uh, and you won't get the action. Really? Yeah, I think so. Just, oh, look at that. You're Let's ugly try. all of a sudden. <laughs> you don't look very attractive at all. Sorry, George. The birthday party that I'm going to today yeah. is uh, the, the, the husband and wife are both uh, Jewish doctors. Awesome. How's that? Yeah. That sounds the, a little the kids are not. Like you said, they're Jewish doctors. The kids are not. Uh, I didn't say it like that. Like what else should they be? 
Street cleaners? Uh, they could be they could be they could Lawyers, be goyish, accountants. goyish doctors, but they're not. That means that they're good. That means that you could actually go to them. If it's a lawyer or a doctor and they're Jewish, that means well, Hyman Roth had it right. When he's listen, Cuban lawyers and Cuban doctors, fakers. He said, I don't trust a doctor that doesn't speak English. Like that's right. Exactly. That's right. You want a fake lawyer or a fake doctor? Right. Go like to Miami. Like, I think right. the, real to do- the real doctors stayed in Cuba. Because you know they're they're yeah they're, they're top they're, notch they're, they're to be top, top notch. notch they're top notch and they've got that uh, lung cancer vaccine that they just patented or something like that that's going on now so they got good good medical system in Cuba all the fake doctors are the yeah ones like that the OB clinics and highly in the back of the guy's station wagon the, uh, garage doctors yeah. yeah the back of the guy's station it's wagon a van now. It's a van we got now. the 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 garage uh, liposuction breast augmentation doctor well they have the accounts there also so I get a lot of clients yeah. in there that I call it like the guys with the, bar, the in the barber <laughs> shops and they do accounting in, in the back like. You don't know your taxes from your your ass from your elbow, and I get uh, referrals like that I, all the I'm, time. I'm watching the story. I'm watching the story. True story. I'm watching the story on um, on the local news, and they busted this guy, fake doctor, shut his office. They're showing the cops pulling files and everything out, and they're interviewing the receptionist. It was one of my in law cousins. <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> like oh oh. Was she I by get, any chance paying cash? Paying out. So she was. What she was saying in the interview was that she had no idea. Really. That she was that, getting penny that, cash and didn't have to report any that, of her W-2 uh, taxes, right? Well, listen, I, this person that I'm speaking of, this in-law, was like a fresh-off-the-boat in-law. So she probably didn't have any idea what normal was right. in America. So for her, that was normal. She was in pay, Getting paid cash? And, yeah, exactly. That's how yeah. I grew up. No, where at? In Cuba? <laughs> no, that's how she, I'm saying her. I'm talking in her person. She grew up in Cuba. That's so, the way things work. So Shana Tova is, is, is for Yom Kippur? Shana Tova is, this, is during the season. Is during the season. So I can just so keep, like we have Rosh Hashanah, I Yom Kippur, keep, and then we didn't even talk about Sukkot. I keep saying that. We didn't we talk, didn't about, talk about We didn't talk about Sukkot. What about Sukkot? Huts. We move out into the huts for eight days. You got huts, huts. now still? Yeah, we still. You, still you do the yeah. huts or do you we, use We still tents? do the huts. Huts. Really? In the backyard, you got huts? Backyard, side yard, front yard. We got huts. What does the hut look like? The hut could be anything. It's just a square. With like a teepee? It could be a teepee? No, it can't be a teepee. Can it's it got to be, be flat on the top. cardboard box then? Like uh, a refrigerator could be. That's box? They used that actually, actually they, in the Holocaust, that's what they, were, that's what they did. They use cardboard, cardboard boxes. Stuff what, do you do? what do you use now? Wood? PV, PVC, wood? PVC pipes PVC or wood pipe. pipes. Uh-huh. And then on top has to be all natural. So it's palm fronds or bamboo or whatever. Oh, that kind of hut. All right. And then so It's all good. So we we physically move into the huts like they did in the in the desert for how long eight days eight days so you all live our in meals a hut. All, no we, we no. can't sleep in there but south florida is not conducive for that okay no, we, this is we take what we take all our meals there okay so it's like camping it's Glam- like camping it's and it's gl- very hot glamping i know it's florida you sit it's out there hot. for three hours during the <laughs> sabbath or the festival meal and you're gonna roast are you allowed to uh, to go like on vacation during this time of year. Sure, if you go to a I place, I could go to go to New York, visit your relatives. There's a, there's in a New group York. that's going to the Bahamas, Atlantis. They rented out the Atlantis, and that's where they're doing the. And they're going to be in huts. Yeah, air, condi- air conditioned. Huts. Oh, okay. I was going to say it's like, like killer. Bahamas ain't colder, ain't no. cooler than air, it is here. AC, air conditioned huts. What a great idea! So I could rent something like uh, like War Memorial Auditorium or the National Guard Armory. It's got to be outside. Like oh, it's got to be outside. So how are they getting the air conditioned huts in the Bahamas? Because they're building it. And yeah, then they, and they pipe in. They oh, pipe so in like just tubes. Yeah, tubes. They're, that they're just... piping in. Exactly. Like here so locally, you... we get like little room air conditioners. Oh, or okay. Standing air conditioners. All right. That doesn't sound very. It's not terrible. I mean, it's not great, but it doesn't it sound very. Cuts fully, out from the humidity a little. Fully committed. It takes the edge off. It takes the edge off. It's so, fully committed. It's, so during, it's modern, like so you, you were just take saying. All, so you take all your the meals times. there, but in between the meals, so you sleep in the house, and in between the meals, you like are you you know inside yeah. watching TV and playing on yeah. the Wii? Not and on everything. the festival days, but yeah. during the intermediate days, yes. During the intermediate days. And then it all ends. It all know, ends? On Tuesday. No. no. It, it all ends like in two weeks. So Yom Kippur is this Tuesday night, Wednesday night. And so it just begins. Next Sunday night starts the Sukkot one, and that goes starts for the, the eight days. So we're like, this whole month, like, like the office is closed like 10 days. I can continue of, saying Shana Tova through the Sukkot season, yes, yes. Through, throughout Sukkot. Yes, and, and then exactly. that ends what? What date? Oh my gosh. Now, I, and I, I need this, man. I'm going to put this on my calendar because I don't want to be one of those ignorant goyim. Wait, but it's like saying happy holidays so, at Christmas time. And let's say, can you say right. it like past December 25th? Can you say it past January No, you'd 1st? look like a dork. No, no, absolutely yes, you not. Can. No, they crucify you with rusty nails. If you Crucified. say happy holidays in January, I that was if you said happy holidays to me in January, I would say, what the hell? 
Really? <laughs> no. Although here they got the Three Kings thing. Nobody does that anymore. I didn't that was a that January is. thing. It's it's archaic. Nobody does that anymore. Is that like Kwanzaa? That was, that was an old school. My my mom was still uh, yeah, into all that. All that gets for a while. dropped. What? No. All that gets dropped. No, Kwanzaa was just completely made up holiday. <laughs> Wait, who's who that for though? The Three Kings. The Three Kings was like this. It, it was a Catholic thing. It was like this addendum. <laughs> addendum. Yeah, well, like you have the Old Testament, it, it ends it was, in Deuteronomy, it was, and then it was like, like an addendum. auxiliary post Christmas something, the Three Kings Day or something. It was just, that was just it, another excuse to get drunk. And, and I don't whatever. know where it came from. Yeah, exactly. It was just another excuse for something for going to church and putting more money in the collection plate. Interesting. So a week from I'm trying to think what the what date is. I have to, I'd have to look at a calendar, but right. Sukkot starts next Sunday night. So whatever date that okay. is, and then you got to go uh, till the following Tuesday night. I've got a uh, you, you know what I what I don't have it used to bring me you have? used to bring me the Jewish calendar every year. Oh, you know what? Didn't you? And this is the guy that this I is, so I'm yeah. going to have to bring you in. I'm now I'm going to have okay. to come by again. A special occasion. Well, we'll we'll have that. There there I mean, you got holidays all year round. Yeah, you we're know? busy. Well, we when's when's Purim? Did we just Purim was in March. Just, oh, yeah, so we you passed uh, that. We passed No, Purim. Purim's in March. Okay. Yeah, yeah we, we passed we that. We didn't do the home intention thing. You didn't invite me. I know. I remember back in the day with with Neil with the poor man and the and the and he only wanted the mun the mun was the, the only way, thing he now wanted. That, now that he's dead, we can just finally say that that the homentashen that he said was the real homentashen, while it was a much better because it was like a pastry, correct? It was like a bready homentashen. That is not, and I've and I've asked everybody this. That is not the emis. That it was not the real homentashen. The other wasn't the what? The say that MS, word again. Yeah, the emis, the real one. Does the, Jack the, can adjust? Translate, Jack? Uh, he's got Google... Not Google, MS. He's got no. Google Fish MS. over there. It's supposed to look MS. like a tri-corner hat. It's supposed to look like Correct. Hayman, Hayman's, like Hayman's hat. hat. Exactly. It's a tri-corner thing, and you put moon and apricot in there and everything. And even though the bready ones were delicious and much superior... I mean, having a bready pastry or a cookie, you're going to take the bready pastry of every course. time. So I can understand why he would like those better. Of course, they were much better. But but those were the Erzatz ones. Sorry. Those were like a, only in one place. Exactly. Uh, the Villa Deli. I did not we bring him those, first? believe me. I brought him the, the authentic You brought the ones. real ones and he gave you shit for it. He, he, he and, gave, everybody. But it and wasn't I brought just him the you. real matzah. Everybody. And I the real everything. We would have people, we would have waves and waves of home and tosh and deliveries, and they were always the cookies. They were always the tri corner cookies, and he would lambaste all of them. And it wasn't until the bready ones showed up that we'd say, then he would say, these are the real these ones. Are the these, these are the real ones, right. <clears throat> but according to every other Jew on the planet, yeah, no Neil. go argue with him. No Neil. Right, well, no, Neil could say the sky is purple. Right, go, and argue, and, and, go and, argue with the gay uh, yeah. atheist uh, no. radio host. God bless you. So we're going to uh, take a break, come back. Uh, and maybe I won't tell the, uh, the the most story until towards the end of the show. Ending the show at 2 o'clock today because I got a kitty birthday party to go to. Thank you so much for the delivery. My pleasure, as Thank always. Thank you for, for the education. Uh, we'll have you on regularly. Thank you, Rabbi pleasure, David, who that. nailed the mezuzah on my door. The mezuzah, people talk about it all the time. Really? Go, you, is, you got a Superman-shaped mezuzah? And I go, With super, the authentic stuff Superman, inside. Superman, right. It's that was Superman. The key. Superman. Superman was Jewish. Yes, he was. And it's rainbow stripe to show our support for the LGBT exactly. community because we like to. We're very all inclusive here. Okay. There are lots of gay Jews. Don't tell me there weren't. We were just talking about one. Oh. Okay. Ooh. Neil. Oh, I forgot. About <laughs> There's one. That's like the Come one. On That's like the one. Yeah, I've, I've seen rainbow yamakis. Yeah. Haven't you? No, I no. I'm you just, notice Jack's wearing one today. Yeah, too. he's I'm making everybody. Bla- he's wearing a black one as am I. He's wearing a big black. Yamaki. Big black. For no reason whatsoever. Yeah, with the see that that's passe. What right? the, the what the the the, the, bra- the gold braid, the piping the over there. The suede and the yeah. And you're gonna make we fun of knitted. mine now? We go knitted. No, you're you've been wearing that for as long as I know you. I've had I've had it for a while. Actually, not I've gotten it since then, but I have my you've had my cleaned yamaka collection. No, it smells like my hair. What's which smells left? good. I just I wash it all the time. Thank you so much. A pleasure. Rabbi David. A pleasure. Sh- Shana Tova. Shana Tova. Say to hi you. and uh, and assalamu alaikum. Alaikum to, salam to the uh, to the cousins out there. And I'll see you at the roller rink. Maybe. Maybe bring one of those hot women. I mean, and he, by the way, audience, he's not lying. He just he had women. He had women hanging all is over like you magnet, when I saw magnetism you. Magnetism or something. It, it is. It's animal magnetism. Thank you so much. God bless. Come back with Flash. I'm going to talk about the medicinal marijuana benefit concert on SoFloRadio.com. 
Catherine B. from the Echo Revolution, where green consciousness is a revolutionary shift in paradigm to heal our planet and our personal well-being in this generation. Because what connects us to nature, to how we eat, and to how we live is the earth. And with every choice we make as conscious consumers, we can create a symbiotic living here on this planet to help her and to help us at the same time. So I'm calling all foodies, all slow cooking mamas, all wannabe gardeners, guerrilla gardeners, activists. This is it, green comrades. Join the Echo Revolution and follow me, Catherine B., in the Echo Revolution. Shift needs to happen. Catherine B. in the Echo Revolution, Fridays 5 to 6 on SoFloRadio.com. Put a team of professional consultants behind your home or business computer with key information solutions. Providing solutions to your internet and computing needs while keeping you on the cutting edge of technology. Preventative maintenance and networking support. Hardware and custom built computers. Let key information solutions be your personal tech staff for your home or office with affordable hourly, monthly, or annual rates to fit anyone's budget. Call key information solutions now. 954 That's 954-973-3374. Or visit keyinformation.com. Strawberry patch and smoothie. Get your hands off me. Huh? I said don't touch me. I shouldn't have went to that party last night. Now I'm seeing talking fruit. You're not dreaming, Bubba. And you're not putting me in that blender to do. But you're just a fruit. (laughs) Who you calling a fruit? You are. You're, you're a delicious passion fruit. Why, sure I'm passionate. How would you like to be blended, huh? I got right, you know. Customers waiting. You gotta go. Yeah, but wait, you can <laughs> At Power Smoothie in Aventura, we show fruit no mercy. Always fresh, always delicious. To make the best smoothies and wraps on earth. Try our new cilantro lime delicious wrap or our hot chipotle chicken. Bower Smoothie in Aventura, located just north of the Aventura Mall in the Promenade Shops. Or call 305 792 5338. Open seven days a week. Hi, this is Zaina Degaya, and I'd love to share with you about my good friend Nicole of Legit Fitness in home training and yoga. She's a certified yoga teacher, and she's an amazing and experienced trainer that can design a program to fit your specific needs and goals. She's so cool. She's super committed to making fitness and health fun and accessible for everyone. Plus, your first week is free as a new client. Here's how you set up your first session. Either call 305 335 5590 or visit www.getlegitfit.com G-E-T-L-E-G-I-T-F-I-T getlegitfit.com 305-335-5590 Do it now! Eat a lot if you want to go Italian and see Jeff Cohen's ponytail You'll have great Italian food that's made by a Jew who has lovely painted nails. Hey, Donnie, how long we've been on this deserted island? Oh, long time, Lonnie. So long, I'm starting to fantasize about food. Yeah, food from the pizza world. Oh, I sure could go for one of their gourmet pizzas right about now. Well, lasagna bubbling with cheese and oozing with tomato sauce. Stop it, stop it. You're making me think of their great manicotti and sensational Italian sandwiches. Yeah, but there's nothing to eat here unless you want to gnaw in this old lamp that washed up on shore. Speak to me, guys. What can I do for you? Hey, look, Donnie, a genie. I'm no genie. I'm Jeff Cohen from the Pizza Loft. Wow, Lonnie, all our dreams are coming true. Okay, okay. Uh, how about some great homemade pasta or calzones and lots of that homemade Italian garlic bread? Pizza Loft does catering, Lonnie. They can cater this whole hey, island. Hey, hey, wait a minute, Donnie. We only get three wishes, don't we? Oh, no. At Pizza Loft, your every wish is my command. Oh, uh, then how about a million bucks, a dozen babes, a way to get us off this stinking island? Sorry, guys. I only do Italian. For lunch, for dinner, for office or home catering. Step up to flavor. Step up to Pizza Loft. SoFloRadio.com. Liberally sprinkled with Jews. We finally got a call here. The number one rated uh, Mohammed David in the show. At least according to my aspirations. Stay away from me. I don't even know how you have children. Miramar, hello. Yes, I want your take on Jay Fiedler. Oh, well, Jay Fiedler is a great quarterback and a good Jew. I like. Jay Fiedler. Uh, well, not to mention he's got extraordinarily smooth buttocks. Oh, yeah! 
Yeah, but you gotta be careful what you say here. Okay, Doc. Thank you, Mo. No, 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 wait a minute. Don't go. But I have nothing else to say. Well, how about this? How's the weather down there in the Miramar? I'm right down the street from you. Oh, yeah. I have to go. Oh, wait, no, wait. By the way, something. No, no, I, I have to go. Look, I tell you what. I'll hold you over the break. How's that, huh? I'll give you one of my old uh, tank t-shirts. How's that? Bye, bye, bye. Uh, no, wait! <laughs> That was the only color we had. The veins on your nose is glowing again. You got big purple veins on your nose and on your face. And around those oozing pimples you call I. You go look in the mirror, you'll see a road map of Ypsilanti. You got your happy son, way to die. My nose glows when something stings. Almost every day, day I think. And my veins, they start to tickle. My adenoid, the doy, 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 doy. Yeah, I look like the fallen apart. That's because I'm a cranky old fight. With a nose that's filled with purple veins. It is something like that you want to see. On Science Channel Discovery. My nose has a bleeding purple vein. Mohammed David, whatever. What is all this hoopla over this uh, Rosa Parks? Ain't nobody ever heard of Jackie Robinson, huh? Sure, Rosa Parks rode on the bus. But Jackie Robinson was an intelligent man and played with balls in a major league of a children's game. I mean, I mean, come on. Who's done more for the black community? Rosa Parks or Jackie Robinson? Huh? Jackie Robinson was my hero. Boy, I can remember when I was a much younger man. And Jackie, he was working at the chock full of nuts. I walked up to him, shook his hand, and said, You are my hero. Now get me a cup of coffee and make it black. You think Rosa made coffee that heavenly? Mo have a David show. What do you want? Yes, Mo. I think what you're doing here. Hey, hey, wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait a minute. Whoa, 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 whoa. Yes. whoa. Are you a black man? Yes. Well, you can't tell over the phone. Who did more for the black community? Rosa Parks or Jackie Robinson? Mo, it's two separate things. What you're doing is blurring the lines between social activism yeah, and not that I'm the Jonas. Oh, he must have been uh, disconnected through no fault of my own. Only any time, pal. You're one of the high tones. More how about it? You mean tell me Jackie Robinson did more for the black No, 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 that's team. not what, what I said. Did did you did you now, don't get me wrong here. It goes something like this. Who did more for the black community? Rosa Parks? Or Nipsey Russell. Nipsey Russell. You don't understand what, what I'm the saying. What hell you be talking about, man? You <laughs> How about I get on? The phones ain't working right. Phones ain't working right. The phones ain't working right. Now who did more? Rosa Parks or Slappy White? Slappy White. Oh yeah. Who did more? Rosa Parks or Rochester? Who did more? Who did more? Come on, come on. Who did more? Larry Parks or Burt Parks? No, no, that's not me. Let me play my old pal Troy. My favorite Mooly. <laughs> you laughed and you cried with ABC's heart rendering true life story of the Three Stooges. And now, this Monday night, ABC presents The Final Painful Days of Mo. In Mo, the last student. <coughs> Come on, open up. Open up, you moron. I want to buy some fish. 
I said open up, you moron. My wife wants me to buy some fish. Come on, open up, wise guy. Get out of here. We ain't open at 12. Now, see here. The sign says you open at 9. Except Tuesday. Now, beat it. Never mind that, you moron. My wife wants two pounds of pump and all she wants them now. Now, open up, Melonhead. Hello? Hello? Why, you, I order. Come on, wise guy, open up. You know who I am? Why, I'm Mo Howard. That's who I am. That's more like it. Are you really Mo Howard? Yeah, that's me. Hello. Ah, oh, wise guy, eh? Come on, open the door. I want my fish, mullet head. Open up the door. Come on, wise guy. Do you have an autograph picture? Well, I got it. Can't assignment eyes in the trunk. I can autograph that. Hello? Feed it. Why, you, why, you order. I, uh, I, uh, eh, never mind. Eh, what's the point? So I don't get my pump at all. A little mo block for the uh, for the people out there. The, I, I will before the end of the show, and you'll have to excuse me because I promised the Neelys out there. There's there's a thing going on. Flash is here, and Christine is that what we're saying? Your name is She's Christine. Um, is a silent speaker, so I'll be doing these speaking for her uh, during the show. If uh, we ask a question, we'll it's just, unique experience. We'll just make up way. make up the answer there. <clears throat> make sure Flash has uh, plenty of juice. Welcome, Flash. But I will, I, you know, I got to apologize that at least, you know, with uh, 10 minutes left in the show or so, I'm going to have to tell the Mo story, which is someone we used to work with. The Neelys, they, they're, they're now two, and this is funny, Facebook feuds. Don't you just love Facebook feuds? There are now two Neil Rogers fan groups on Facebook, and I think they hate each other for some reason. I'm not sure why. I think there's some infighting going on. There's a lot of... Because, you know, that's a worthwhile thing. Like the infighting that's going on on my Facebook page because I posted something about the Muslim kid that uh, they got in trouble for building the bomb. The clock, clock. The clock that, that they thought looked like a bomb, so I posted something. And... Um, because so, I, I got a lot of friends. Most of them are fans. You know, I got like yeah. 1,700, and, and they're fans of the show, the George Rodriguez show, the Neil, uh, when Neil was around. <clears throat> and uh, some, of the, some of the people got into an argument. There's a big argument thread going on about the bomb thing. Like, I got some, I got some cop friend fans. I know that. Weird. And so they're always, they're like the cop apologists on there. So, the, you know... They're being sympathetic towards the people, and they say, "Look, this is what a suitcase bomb looks like." So it didn't look that far away. But my point was, they didn't they didn't call bomb squad. You know, they didn't um, evacuate the school. They didn't uh, do any of the things that that they would have done if they really thought it was a bomb. No, they just called a squad car and had the kid hauled off to jail. You little dark Muslim kid. Uh, there, but the Neil Rogers fans, I told they're they're asking if um. If uh, Mo really did try to get Neil fired, so I promised them that I would tell the whole story. But I don't want to make uh, you guys wait any longer. This is the important thing. As a matter of fact, just so you know, um, I was going to take the whole day off because I'm allowed to, but I wanted to make sure that um, that I kept my promise to Flash here to promote uh, you know, the events. This and I kept saying, i got to apologize, so uh, back up the tape. It's the Everglades Awareness Benefit Concert, not the medic- Medicinal Marijuana Benefit Concert, which is what we usually promote. When you're here, although I guess it's fifty fifty. We've actually done you do both. both. Well, last year we did an on um, phone interview. Right. I, I couldn't make it to the station that day for this, and I'm and I'm glad you made it today. And by the way, and welcome, Christine. Welcome to the show. You can say just say hi. Just say hi. All right. Awesome. It's it's a fun environment. We really just it's very. You're not going to get in trouble here unless you no. slander somebody. Well, that's a different Although, story. Although, you know, uh, when I slander, I sla- slander good. I slander well. You know, Donald Trump worships the devil. Donald Trump has, you know, black robes and he sacrifices goats to Satan all the time. I don't think you know? anyone can prove that. It's not true. Well, you know, he could sue me because then I'd have to prove that it is true. But I would just love to see that. That headline. That, later that would actually Donald, be very amusing. Would, you, you would get you would get Donald great Trump, publicity. Donald Trump sues local internet radio host for saying that he, uh, you know, drinks goat blood and worships Satan. But yeah. is it pasteurized blood? I mean, I bet you, yeah. Um, 
It's it's heat pasteurized, oh, okay. of course. Uh, yeah, I, I really doubt that he cares. You know, the thing no. when you're so ultra rich, like if I were that rich, I really wouldn't care what the people down at street level were saying about me. You know, as a matter of fact, if um, if any of these people cared at all, they wouldn't be that that thing that they are. They would take some of that wealth and and do something worthwhile with it. Like well, they can donate to like, like the Everglades, like movement. like to help the Everglades. For example, yep. they could sponsor this. So this is the eighth annual yes. Everglades Awareness Benefit Concert. Let's do the details, and then, of course, let's do some Everglades awareness because not everyone is aware okay. of what's going on in the Everglades. Uh, you know, we lo- This is an international show. But, I mean, we live here. Uh, a lot of the local well, this people... This is an international issue, actually. This is not it, just it, a local it is thing. But this, it's this happening ha- everywhere. It's- well, the Everglades affects a lot of people, and not just locally, but because of the tourism and because mm-hmm. of the water table... And because of all the things that happen with the Everglades, with the fisheries, you know, it, it's an international issue. It, if the Everglades gets destroyed to the point that it's no longer a viable ecosystem, it affects right. more than South Florida people. There are people, I don't want to mention the, the sugar industry, but why not? I will. Um, you can. The sugar industry, the, uh, the the sugar farmers are probably what p- public enemy number one. Where Everglades Actually, destruction. I mean, I, the, I would say no. The, I would no, say sh- sugar or, industry or uh, urban development or the development. What's I would say the bigger risk right now is oil and fracking, because that that is a chemical issue that goes. Beyond I'm sick the, the to development. my stomach about the fracking thing because they're destroying. I mean, that's one of the things. I mean, water, <laughs> water, clean water. By the way, would anyone like water? Because <laughs> we have bottled water in the refrigerator. I'm sorry, it's bottled. I'm not. I drink tap water. I drink tap water. Thank too. you. By the way, we have award winning water in Hollywood. We had a show here recently. First of all, they had, there's a documentary. Of course, the city puts it out, but but the guy that runs the water plant was showing all of the awards and certificates that they got. Uh, at, at the plant over here for the clean water but we had a we have a couple of uh, eco-minded shows on the air one of them is uh, is going coming on later on five to six uh, Catherine B and the echo revolution specifically about you know ecology and things like that here and and the Everglades has come up on that show yeah. anyway she had a she had a we she had a show all about water and the guy brought in all the different kinds of water bottled water and we tested our tap water and even his test said because it's got a nice alkali mm-hmm. uh, content in it right out of the tap, and uh, and it's good. And yeah, I drink tap water at home. I drink tap water here. I well, just, Ze- Zephyr yeah. Hill bottled water is, a, it, is tap water. is the same thing. Yeah. God, God forgive me. Would you like a bottle of water? No, thank <laughs> you. I, just, I imagine some moron standing there, filling yeah. it with the tap. Yeah, and, and selling it to us. Selling it to us, right? So I just get it, get it out of the sink over out of the. Yeah. Kitchen, bathroom, thing, whatever. It's Hollywood. It's tap water. Uh, tap water is huge, and and the fracking they're destroying. I mean, you you watch that uh, Gasland is the documentary. I think they have a part two now, don't they? Uh, the issue is ongoing. It's it, ongoing, it, and the, I didn't. I really didn't know that the that the fracking thing was starting to affect uh, us here in the Everglades. There was actually a, a well that was being developed in Collier County illegally, and it got. The, the attention of enough activists who brought more attention from state regulators who shut it down, they got a little fine, but they did yeah. a lot of damage, and yeah, they, they were they, still planning yeah, to do more. And if more people cost, aren't aware... Cost of doing business with them, the fines and everything, they all factor that in. That's all part of their spreadsheet. They, they don't care. Well, don't care about the it's cleaning up our Everglades and cleaning up the water. Like When you have an oil spill like what they had in Louisiana... Or what they had in even the Exxon Valdez, they're still yeah. seeing residual in yep. in Alaska from that from twenty years ago. They said mm-hmm. it's clean, but oh, yeah. reality says no. And if you have a, a, a chemical spill from fracking in our aquifer, we can't clean that up. Yeah. So we need to be able to be proactive and make sure that there's no oil drilling, there's no fracking, and we use things like solar. There's a campaign that we're developing, or that actually is developed. There's a petition drive going on now by Floridians for Solar Choice to expand solar here in, in Florida and make it more accessible and be able to make it more incentivized so people will be able to sell the solar back and be able to sort of decentralize the solar grid without it just going directly to FPNL. So there, there's different issues to be able to say, okay, we're in the sunshine state. Yeah. We're using like 1% of our energy policy for solar. They want to expand the nuclear plant, which is going to take up more water. Right. 
It's and, a, su- sunshine and and wind. You know, Florida is flat, so we we have wind pretty much uh, all the time. If you know one or the other, I mean, we should have windmill generators everywhere. We should have solar cell, you know, solar panels everywhere. I mean, sun, so solar panels be, are a lot more um, <laughs> expansive. Mm-hmm. Wind is a little bit different because you have to work with certain tracks, and one of the things with wind is. The birds and the bats are, are, yeah. are getting you know I, chopped up a I, lot. I heard about that recently in or- Oregon. I was in Oregon a, a year ago. And they have the, the the giant windmill generators everywhere, and apparently there is a little bit of pushback because of the, the birds thing. And and I didn't know this either. The earthworms and another another ground life. Did you know about this? Earthworms. Do you remember? Yeah. Here, here's the thing. You can look it up. <clears throat> Do you remember? <clears throat> excuse me. In like grade school or science, that they would teach you how to. If you were going to get worms to go fishing, um, guys would go out with a truck battery, jumper cables, and coat hangers, and they would stick the coat hangers in the ground. You've heard this right, and um, and electrify the coat hangers, and then the worms would crawl up to the surface to get away from the electric current. It's unpleasant, mm-hmm. okay. Well, they're running all these high powered wires, this network under the ground. To, to to funnel the electricity from the windmill generators to a centralized location. All these wires are under the ground, and earthworms are coming up out of the ground. And, you know, you need the earthworms to aer- aerate the soil. They're part of the, the ecosystem that keeps the uh, the soil fertile. So it's like killing soil, you know. So, Interesting. Yeah. You got to... It's one of those things. Think it through. And indeed, because and, uh, I, 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 I watch things and I read things, and the solar panel... The solar panel uh, manufacturing is toxic and potentially. Uh, so now they're trying to to come at solar panel production with green methods because up until recently that that hasn't even occurred to people. There's a toxic chemicals and it's pl- inv- involving plastics and things like that. At least the um, the large scale manufacturing of the solar panels. Because of course you don't think that that companies that are in the manufacturing industry are going to think green as their first priority. They're going to think profit as their first priority. So you know, back to the drawing board and just, and it's just a manufacturing thing. It's just a manufacturing thing. Once they're manufactured, they're great. Like, um, have you seen the new things, the, the panels that go in streets, they're modular. Have yeah, you seen I've that seen thing? That. They the run modular? entire, yeah. the whole street, the whole it, street. It, and it, and, and you can do so much more, uh, than just collect electricity the from lights, it. The, it's the, right. all done by yes. solar everything. roadways. Light, you can, solar really roadways cool. and, uh, and you can put not, not only are the, the traffic guidance lines lit up, but then you can also change them. Like if there's construction up ahead, you can have the road actually say that. You can have detour lines right there. They can change the, where the lines are, change well, the direction. Smart roads. Right, smart roads. Smart roads. Excellent. But they're yeah. called solar roadways. Uh, and you can look roads. them up online. <clears throat> very cool. They, they, yeah, they're, they're very interesting. I, I'd so like back to see that in Florida. Back to uh, fracking in the oil drilling i don't think i don't think i'm as aware as i want to be about what's going on in the everglades um with the oil and the gas well they want to start drilling in broward bull uh, broward county and they're doing it in an area that's for oil for, for oil and they're doing it in an area that is prime panther habitat so they want to of course put something really toxic and destructive in the middle of the only area that's maybe not the only area but when the prime area is for the Florida panther, which is endangered and ideally should be protected. Right. And we need to find more ways to create alternatives. What's your take on the indigenous native, they want to be able to hunt the panthers, you know? I have haven't heard actually that? heard about that. Yeah, but most of the, a, the native people that I've been working true. with are very true. environmentally Good. conscious and... Good. Are, yeah, a lot of them, are, we've been fortunate to work with a lot of them th- with the... Love the Everglades movement. Houston Cypress is one of the founders of Love the Everglades movement, and he's been a really strong voice for tribal participation in environmental issues. And during the summer symposium that we had recently, we had uh, Michael Frank speaking about a lot of the history of the Everglades and how they used to fish, and Mm -hmm. now because of all the pollution, they can't fish and their water's tainted. And we had Bobby C. Billy talking about a lot of the history even further. It was a very extensive presentation. We did this as an educational forum. We had a bunch of different speakers. It was a full day showcase starting at like 10 going to like 5. And we had different speakers like Senator Dwight Bullard, um, Mayor Phil Stoddard was there, 
um, Matthew Schwartz from the South Florida Wildlands Association. And so this was more education, and now we're taking some of that education and bringing it into the concert where we're having, again, a whole bunch of speakers. We will have Mayor Phil Stoddard there. Uh, Senator Buller's not available, unfortunately. But we do have um, Representative David Richardson speaking. So it's important to be able to have elected officials connected to the people, connected to the issues. And that's one of the forums that we're using as a way to be able to get more people proactive and participating in our electoral process. You said um, uh, Love the Everglades is a. You, you mentioned them. Yes, Love, Love the Everglades movement is one of the prime organizations behind the, the Everglades of Arizona concert. Is is that who uh, like who's the beneficiary of the um, you know of the funds when you're fundraising? Is it is it them? For is this, it, it will be Love the Everglades. Movement. It will be Love the Everglades, and uh, where are they based? Just uh, you know, tell me a little bit about them if you can. Um, well, it's it's a Miami based group, and. We've been doing a lot of meetings in different locations to be able to get people aware of what's Are happening. Are you in the group? Or yes, the group? I'm actually one of the coordination circle people. Excellent. All right. Um, last year, Love the Everglades Movement and Ploppy Palace Productions partnered up for the seventh annual Everglades Awareness Benefit Concert, and that went well. And then they asked me to be part of the coordination circle, and I've been more active as part of the education, the outreach, production work, not just for the concert and the symposium but for other events that we've done as well uh do you guys lobby is it a lobbying group I mean, what right now lobbying isn't our our focus as we grow because it's still a new organization our main thing is participation involvement education outreach more of a full spectrum movement where we're tying in elements of art and spirituality and respect for the water and tying in policy as well but our version of lobbying is reaching out to different people rather than going up to tallahassee and doing it but we've had representatives who've gone up to different rallies all over the state so as a small group we've been very effective as far as outreach and networking and building the movement within a broader scope with just with the Everglades Awareness Benefit Concert, we have over 25 different organizations participating in different capacities from sponsorship, education, outreach, speakers. And we're just not doing the Everglades itself. We have people from the Miami Pine Rocklands, people from um, Biscayne Bay working with the Virginia Key issues. So we're really trying to make this a broader issue of our whole ecosystem as a, as a region, not just the Everglades. But of course, the Everglades is a source because that is where the water flows from. And if the water flows in a, dis a disturbed manner or is mm -hmm. polluted, it affects everything down the line. I don't, you're right. I don't think a lot of... Well, I want to give Floridians some credit, and I don't, I don't a lot. You know, I, I live here. I'm a Floridian, uh, you know, and but we... We, we bust a lot of chops on this show. Uh, we call it being honest about ourselves, about the Floridians, because there's a, you know, Florida, Florida and Floridians, we're not known for being the smartest people on the planet. The rest of the country, especially after that, that election debacle, you know, the Bush and the Chad counting and everything, we're, we're the butt of a lot of jokes. And a lot of the, you know, when Jerry Springer was on, a lot of people came from Florida, so we're not, we're not known for our smarts. But I think, you know, here in Florida, most Floridians understand that the Everglades is a, a big water system. It's a big, wide river. It's the river of grass. <clears throat> most Floridians know that. I think most people outside of Florida think that it's just, you know, um, a big swamp or something, and they don't think that much about it. You know, what can you tell those people about why, you know, why the Everglades is so important as an ecosystem uh, and why it's more than just a big swamp? Well, it isn't really a swamp in the sense that, as you said, it's a river of grass. So it's flowing water right, from, from Okeechobee. From even further north than Okeechobee. Okay. And we got a lot of springs in Florida. People outside of Florida don't understand that either. We got a lot of groundwater. Well, that, that's the point. Springs. We have an aquifer mm -hmm. of water flowing from north central Florida all the way down to Florida Bay and into the Keys and feeding the water there. So a lot of our water around the state is brackish because we're getting influx of fresh water into salt water. Mm -hmm. So that affects the different species that live there, definitely affects the mangroves, which is a threatened and protected species. And, and that ties in with what's going on with Virginia Key when they developed that whole area and clear cut hundreds of mangrove trees 
because people got, were aware, then we got Durham involved, and Durham was able to say, no, this isn't right. So right. you know, by utilizing the resources that we have available, we're able to affect more change. If people are too passive to understand the issues and not involved and feel like their voice doesn't matter, nothing gets done. But when people get active, involved, participate, become more aware, they become empowered to actually do more. And then when they do that, they see results like we shut down that well in Collier County. Excellent. That's great. Do you have do you have um, and people that don't know about mangrove? Outside of Florida, yeah, I got a lot of Mon- Montana. I used to live in Montana. I had a lot of Montana people listening. You know, mangroves. One of the you know, a, a tree that likes salt water. But there's more to it than that. Mangroves create more land. Gr- mangroves spread and, and and cause more more land to develop. They they expand the land. And here in a, in a time when coastline is disappearing, we don't want to kill the plants that are making the coastline grow and spread. Mangroves you know trap sand and silt and the birds and the birds and the guano and uh, you know gives life to other things. Mang- Mangrove, mangrove is great. Uh, it's not just those little seeds that you throw at each other on the beach. A lot of life, <clears throat> a lot of life in mangroves. Yeah, yeah, a lot. So it's it's horrible it's that they're cutting it down. In there. And ab- absolutely, and uh, and the Everglades. The thing about the sugar, because that was the first thing that I that I became aware of, is that the uh, the fertilizer runoff from all of the uh, the sugar farms is um, it's killing the the indigenous you know plant life and, and fish life in the Everglades and and the other plant that respond positively to it are the are these the these weeds tails. that choke that uh, Brazilian that, that, pepper uh, also known as the hum, Florida holly yeah it's a mess they grow out of anything they self seed and um and, and it's a bad <laughs> it's a, it has a very negative effect on the e- ecosystem over here and uh, and I'll just I just you know with the exception of a a a sweet treat now and then I cut sugar sugar drinks out of my life a long time ago when I was uh trying to not be fat anymore and uh, and stopping that, and and just uh, our consumption of sugar and our sick. Uh, I mean, we have an obsession with it. I think in America, and and sugar. And I know that was a big part of the Cuban economy. In Cuba is like the sugar. It's like, you know, maybe we should turn that into biofuel or something. We need to stop eating sugar and the runoff. But I thought that was the biggest problem, and also the development, because we can't we can't build fast enough in Florida for some reason. Well, one of the flaws right now is that we're building beyond need. And you see that particularly in Miami. Um, One of the things that's part of the the fight for the Everglades right now, there's something called the River of Grass Greenway, which is a development of a bike path. So, well, cool, but not cool. So reality is they should be putting that money into urban bike paths where people actually are, rather than building a 75-mile bike path that's like, 16 20 feet wide right through the everglades for really a small number of people that will be using it but once you start building then you put up more stuff then you have public facilities bathrooms oh then you have a store then you have this and then you have all this development going right through the everglades that's not needed and quite honestly not wanted even the the bicyclists that ride out there say it's not needed and as a bicyclist who rides here in south florida i would much rather have that money put into fixing our roads adding more bike lanes you know making it safer for people to ride and walk here in south florida so if they're going to spend all that money that's I'm, I'm money that more. should be reality. Right. I'm seeing more. I'm, it's, it's a, it pleases me to see the bike thing going on. I want to take this point to take this moment to mention that uh, that Flash is one of these people that walks the walk. He, uh, he doesn't drive. He just bike and public transportation yep. everywhere. Uh, and friends are know, driving hats, once in a while. hats off to you, uh, Yamaka off to you because um, and a lot of people that like to, they talk a good game, but when it comes time to sacrifice something about their lifestyle to make a, a have a positive effect. You know, and I get, I'm, I'm making baby steps in that direction. If I didn't have to shuttle my daughter around everywhere, and I have to, uh, I would be bike guy. I live five minutes from here driving. I, you know, I bike to the beach. I bike, uh, you know, all, all around the place, but I have to have a car to shuttle my daughter around. I would love, by the way, I'm looking forward to the day that I don't have to anymore, that um, I can just ride my bike everywhere. I, I stay local, and uh, and I don't need to ride my bike everywhere. So, you know, kudos, kudos to you and everybody else that uh, that exists. Uh, you know, in in modern society, because uh, it's an example. I mean, and, and it probably comes up when when um, 
uh, I can only imagine that it comes up in conversation like, who could live in South Florida without a car? And then... I've know, actually never had a car. <clears throat> never had a car. This is uh, one of the things that I've learned so, about Flash. And, and, and here you are, <laughs> existing, doing just fine. Honestly, I, I enjoy not driving. You know, I, I, when I do drive, and I do have a license, mm-hmm. and I can drive... I can't drive stick, but I, I can drive an yeah. automatic and stay in between <laughs> two little white lines and, you know, the world plays nice. But yeah. overall, I don't like it. I, okay. I'd rather ride my bike. I'll get there longer and it'll be right. a little sweatier. It can be... Rain sucks. This is this is a horrible place, yeah. This is a horrible place to like driving. I mean, if you like driving, you're not going to like driving here. Uh, everybody else is going to ruin it for you. Not to mention our very well-planned uh, um, roadways. A very well conceived uh, highway system and traffic system here. Although there are worse places, <laughs> I know. <laughs> I'm told by the people that live in LA that we don't have anything to bitch about. I'm, that's what they tell me. The people that go back and forth. They, uh, I guess hey. it's all relative. It, it, it is all relative. And then the people in Boston say, all of y'all shut up. All of y'all shut up. Boston looks like a pile of spaghetti that they just <laughs> dropped onto a map. <laughs> Actually, yeah, I was, I was in Boston recently and. It was completely confusing, and it's, I, I have. It's, it's the there. same road system that they had since colonial days. Just, yeah, literally, yeah, it yeah, is horse it, trails that just <laughs> tur- got paved. <laughs> and <laughs> you know, being here in Miami, we are fortunate to have a general grid system, mm-hmm. so things do yes. have some sort general. of li- it's linear. A, it's contact. a grid system with exceptions. Yeah, well, we, we don't have as much the, the same topography mm. either where, you know, you don't have right. Right, like hills right. and mountains right. and lots of streams. So, and, and we so. don't have potholes either, at least not like they have in other places. No, we have some. But yeah, no, not, not like they have another. People that drive around say we have the best roads. As far as smooth surface, we have the best roads. Because we don't have it's it's constant. The the winter will break up the roads every year, so there's constant yeah. construction and constant pothole maintenance that you have to do all the time. Meanwhile, back to the Everglades. Is uh, is there anyone in office right now? Are there any uh, you know senators, congressmen, commissioners that are allies that that people that yes, are doing actually, things uh, on your that people should know about? Right now, uh, Senator Dwight Bullard sponsored a bill to ban fracking. Excellent. He, he has some other co-sponsors. Dwight Bullard. Dwight Bullard. Bullard. Okay. Uh, Florida State Senator from Miami, um, very proactive guy, very conscious environmentalist, and when I go flyering and I include him on it, I still run into some of his former students because he was also a teacher, mm-hmm. and they love him. They, they I get great response, and you don't get that from the, the speaker list as much, just because a lot of people don't know the people as much, but because he's been so out there through working through his whole life even as, as his mother was a, a florida state center as well so he's he's been part of this from, you know, from the beginning and it's beautiful to see and i said he sponsored a bill to, to ban fracking which okay, is really great. important um we also have um commissioner danielle cava levine or no, okay. levine levine cava okay um she spoke at the summer symposium as well and she was talking about the things that are happening locally on environmental issues. And again, uh, Representative David Richardson. So, you know, he, he's been doing a lot of stuff. He's been doing a lot of stuff with Miami, the, the Miami Beach cleanup work as well. And th- that's actually another thing we've been tying in with. With this event, we're the after party for this big volunteer cleanup. So if, if volunteercleanup.org is doing this big event and we're the after party for that. So um, we're we're reaching out to all these different people and providing an outlet for them to interact. And again, also uh, South Miami uh, Mayor Phil Stoddard, he's going to be speaking and talking about his campaign with stopping FPNL from expanding. And what 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 are, the, what are they trying to do? They want to build a bigger nuclear plant and they want to run power lines. Either there's a few different proposals I heard. One was going right up US one. One going through the Everglades. I'm not totally sure of it, but they want to build the, the the new power plant to send power out of South Florida to other parts of the state. Mm. So as you're talking about the earthworms, you know they're yeah. just running nuclear power energy all through granted, through, through the that, ground, yeah, it, it, or through the sky. It, it needs to be. You, you know we. We learn, because that's the thing about science, and I'm a science guy, is that every day you learn something new. You know, the, the Romans went crazy because they had lead plumbing, because they thought that was modern. 
you know, the poor people, you know, were drinking, they were sticking their faces in the river, but the, but the, but the aristocracy had aqueducts, and uh, which led to lead pipes. So they were drinking lead, and they thought that that was very modern. You know, and a Chinese emperor went mad because he was eating mercury capsules that his doctor prescribed for him. You know, we really need to investigate the the ramifications of what we're doing before we just embark before, on it. Before, exactly. Yeah. Before, not before, after. Before, they're, they're well, that, all, that ties in uh, with GMOs a lot too. And, yeah, yeah, all of that, and, then, and 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 the pesticides because that's uncommon. And now, uh, you know, uh, you gotta you gotta separate those two sciences from each other and study them individually to find out what it is uh that that is you know a that you know a b equals c i don't remember carving on myself but uh but something did here's a question blood what go ahead here's a question i've got why isn't fpl deemed a monopoly because you've got other states like texas that have like four or five there are are other uh, energy companies in florida all right yeah, Duke Energy is more in the mm-hmm. uh, Tampa just, area. Okay, so you, there are FPNL is actually a conglomeration that's not just Florida Power and Light. They right. are nationwide and beyond. Mm-hmm. Uh, a friend of mine was telling me that they're tied into something going on in Hawaii soon, potentially. So there's a lot of other things that are the hmm. the reason that that's monopoly esque when you're talking about things like uh, power, you know, utilities, is because you really can't have all these companies running wires through a city, you know, uh, overlapping each other, that would be madness. Mm -hmm. So cities have to contract with one company just in the, in the name of, of, of sanity. You're right. Or like and cellular it, it, it towers, they have to, right. to lease. Cellular towers, yeah. so, see, you can have overlapping services uh, with, with a cellular thing because they don't have to run wires. But it's if you're running pipes, you know, whether it's for to, to deliver the water, the sewer pipes that take the water away, the electricity is it be on wires until, they, until we go to broadcast power. One of these, it's a science fiction thing. Um, so you have to have that FPL. You know, I got I got family member in laws, former mm-hmm. former in laws that work with FPL, and and they say you know FPL. Everybody's mad at FPL because they're really good at what they do. They're very good business people, and they have grown and expanded. And when you compare, this is what they say: when you compare the rates that we pay in Florida and and all of the other uh, indicators of how FPL operates as a company, you will find that they're better on average than other power companies. Nevertheless, they're a company, and well, they the- want to profit and they want to expand. That's in the DNA of any company. I'm, a, you know, this is a company. I, w- I would love to profit and, and expand. Uh, I would like to you know not not destroy the environment while i'm doing it um well they they actually are one of the bigger solar developers as well and they have a petition going on about solar it just increases their monopoly with solar sure as opposed to the the floridians for solar choice petition so what's what's their what's their uh, floridians for solar choice what's their angle they want to be able to allow people to sell their power to who they want okay and that's what, it, like it, you, it, you collect solar power and then it, your little meter you, runs backwards and yeah well, otherwise what they're doing the if you use solar and you sell it back to fpnl they turn around and sell it at a different rate mm-hmm. to other people and it, it's it all ties down to money Where's Nikolai Tesla they, when they, they, don't, they don't make it easy for you to go green it's making cars no, well, I, there's a whole, depending on what municip- uh, municipality you live in, collecting rainwater is illegal. Uh, you have to be connected to the grid. It's illegal. If you're not connected to the grid, yeah, I'm uh, not. Because uh, Montana, uh, in, where I lived in Montana, uh, and it, it's a very weird amalgam of political philosophies, but there is a commonality there. And most of those people like to be off the grid. They like to mind their own business. They like to be self-sufficient. They like to, you know, hunt, fish, garden, grow their own food. Uh, it's it's woven into the culture there. And indeed, why would people live in a tiny town in the middle of the woods? That's why. is because they want to be as close to nature as possible and uh, and live in the old ways as possible. And and here we have these 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 movements across the country by... But, I mean, it's it's not confusing to me where it starts. You can't collect rainwater in a in a city that has a drainage problem. You know, that's what's going on there. It's not like in other places where where it's farmland or something. They say you can't collect rainwater on your land because you have to allow it to flow into the river because people are are using that to irrigate. You can't just hoard the water. 
So that's the rationale in those areas. But what's the rationale in an air, in, in a in an urban situation where people are paying taxes to have water drained away anyway? You know, the storm water has to be drained away anyway. I can't have a rain barrel, uh, and more and more, that's becoming the law. No, you can't have a rain barrel. You that's know, what's so it? cool about this. Yeah. This event is for kids, adults, and it's really important to educate the kids now. <clears throat> So that they get yeah, man. what they're going to inherit. Speaking of this event, because I was just looking through the roster over here, some names that I recognize, Spam All-Stars, first of all, big big group. But also Oski Foundation. Oski, Jack's had Oski on his show. By the way, I'm going to be oh, on yeah. Jack's show tonight. Oski has been in this studio, the previous studio. Uh, we, we, love, uh, we love Oski, formerly of Tobacco Road, and, and now he's back with the Oski Foundation. He's well, they're a, back again. Oh, look at that. Oh, and I can't even read it. Ico Ico, Ico, Ico. Ico, Ico is is going to be there. Yeah. And Brendan O'Hara been uh, been a Brendan O'Hara fan way because a, a, a personal friend of his, not mine, gave him gave me a, a CD like little homemade burn CD. Hey, my friend Brendan O'Hara is pretty good. And I'm like, okay. This is back when I was on the regular radio and people gave me CDs all the time. And I'm like, okay. They put it in my car. And like, it's going oh, in the collection. Oh, this is actually good. And when I kept it in my car and I listened to it, one of his first. Um, collections over there and and all these other people that i don't recognize over here mr grim reaper yeah he's yeah. a hip-hop right. artist excellent i'm gonna do so everything. it's really a mix of styles we have rock and reggae and jazz and funk and latin fusion and folk music and blues. Per- percussion yeah we got blues of course and tribal percussion and traditional peruvian and wow it's 11 hours. Traditional th- Peruvian, like with the pan flutes. Yeah. And, uh, uh, we have Kuyaki playing. That. This is just going to be really cool. Diverse, everything across the board. So, yeah. With, and with the, the show program, so if people don't know the music, they don't know the style, they can go to ploppypalace.com and they'll get the schedule and the type of music. And then you can you know, look it up and find the bands that you like and ideally find new bands that you like. It's a Gramps. Yes. That's By the way, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be a grandfather, and that's going to be my grandfather name. Is Gramps. Congrats. January. I got to choose my own grandfather name. So I chose Gramps, because I'm going to be the cool granddad. Well, okay. that's... Uh, if you, be uh, proactive. Yeah. I, uh, yeah well, if, you met, if you met my counterpart, like if you met my counterpart, it would be useful. Yeah, my dad chose Poppy. That's, that's cool. And the, ten, um, the tickets are $10? $10, yes. $10. Yeah. Uh, in advance and at the door, all the same thing? Yeah. Advanced tickets available, ploppypalace.com. That's what, that's what you need to remember. Yep. That's what you need to take away from this. Ploppypalace.com. Go to the show. Have a good time. Promote, you know, learn, spread the word, help, uh, help the Everglades. What's the, what's the end goal? Like, what do you, what do you, because a lot of people think, oh, the Everglades, that's, that's already protected. It's already protected. That's what a lot of people think, right? Well, they may think it, but they're wrong. Well, they're wrong. So what you're going for is uh, is, is what? To sustainability. Have, you know, this, sustainability, this, but what kind of... You're looking for legislature that, that says what? It, it's more than legislature. There's, there's physical actions that need to okay. be done. That you're, you're talking about water management from the pollution that we're talking about from sugar, stopping the issues with uh, road encroachment, urban development stopping things w- from fracking and oil drilling. And again, a lot of this stuff is happening. If people don't get aware, then it continues to expand. They're doing other things outside of South Florida as well. There's a, a plant that's being built on the West Coast and around Naples area. So there, there's stuff that's happening. Like I said they want to expand the nuclear plant. Um, Talk Turkey, about tur- point, Turkey, Turkey point. point. So th- this is an ongoing thing. This is not a signature <clears throat> issue where... You sign it, and the Everglades is saved. We have to deal with a whole bunch of logistical things to be able to make sure that this is ongoing protection. We have to make sure that we're stopping the, the saltwater intrusion. We also have to make sure that we're dealing with climate change and stopping the, the sea level rise because otherwise yeah. I'm going to trade my bicycle I, I, for a kayak. I've seen all the models and I'm like, by the way, we're in a high spot, <laughs> just so you know, city of Hollywood. And, and, and it's specifically right where my apartment is, where the old studio is, yes. 11 feet up. <laughs> and, uh, I, you know, they, you've seen those models where you get to slide the sea level scale, you know, and like <laughs> all the way to the right. And I'm still on land over there. But everything else, including the Everglades, is underwater by that point. Um, it's not, you know, it's a low lying area. Yeah. And yeah, that, that freaks me out. That uh, that there are climate change deniers out there, 
Well, it's um, Congress. <laughs> you know, well, you, they're you, paid. They're paid. I don't believe. See, I don't believe that they don't believe. I believe that they're paid to not give a shit. They may not give a shit, but they at the same point, if the top down doesn't believe, the bottom feels justified to ignore reality. And there's a whole lot of tea partiers and a whole lot of other people that say, well, these people say it's still up for debate, and therefore yeah. they consider it a debate versus yeah. science people that say this is a real issue. Those, those people, if it, you know, and, and, I, and I mean this when I say it, if it weren't for their bigotry, the, the people that are feeding them information would have no avenue to their minds. It starts with that. Hey, we hate the same minorities, right? Yes, here's a bunch of bullshit for me that you will also accept. If it were not for that, they would have no hold over these these tea partiers. They're they're the new clan. Everything else that they believe, they they believe because they're listening to people that are that are bigots just like they are. Bigots, sexists, well, homophobes, News. just like they are. There's a reason that they watch Fox News because it it feeds them back their own opinion. You know, it's an echo chamber that feeds well, them back their own opinion. There's something about sensationalism that I don't know. Mm-hmm. Sometimes people. Uh Need more drama. We have enough. Well, I mean, we can do drama. As a matter of fact, if you'll excuse me, it's, with 10 minutes left in the show, I have to keep a promise to these Neelys out there. They're the, the Neelys, the, the people that are the, the fans, the Neil Rogers fans. And, and we have, and by the way, Neelys, I am serious. Around the time of Neil's birthday, I think uh, his birth, the, uh, like uh, the, the Friday. This year, Friday is like a day or two after his actual birthday. It's going to be November like the 7th or something, and Neil's birthday is November the 5th. I'm going to have a fan appreciation show and, uh, and just let them have whatever they want. Maybe even bring a couple of these really chronic, desperate... But not the guy with the eyes. He'll never be in the studio. Bring them on the show. Do you remember Neil Rogers? Are you a local girl? A, that's the last picture of us together, his last public appearance right there, You know the Neil Rogers Memorial Studios um, over here. But uh, the, these people are, man, they're, they're, they're touched in the heads. The, the fact that they're Neil Rogers fanatics is about the most normal thing about them. And I don't know what the hell the deal is with the two groups going at each other. But they keep asking these conversations in the groups. They keep asking these questions, sorry, and asking me to weigh in and answer the questions. And I always answer this the same way. Listen to the show. I'm still doing a show. I still have a forum. Don't make me type, assholes. So here's the Mo story. They wanted to know the Mo story. Do you know the Mo story? Please forgive me. We'll, we'll, we'll hit the email address before the end of the show, but I have to tell the Mo story. Howard David, he was the voice of the Dolphins for a while. I don't remember if you remember that episode. And uh, the question was, did Mo try to get Neil fired? The answer to that is, that's, yes, that's an understatement. That's a, a huge understatement. However, Mo knew that Neil um, was fireproof. He knew that, that Neil couldn't get fired. And, I, and there's, there are a lot of details like, like why, um, why, was his, why was he called Mo? Let's start with that. Um, <clears throat> when, we, when we were making fun of him one day, Neil and I, uh, and this was, this was already, Neil was in Toronto, uh, and I guess I should probably start at the, at the beginning. They brought him in to talk to Neil on the microphone, and they talked back and forth, and as soon as he walked out of the studio, Neil says to me, so? And I said, so what? What's he like? And I go, I don't know, he's an older guy about your age, a um, little bit of a punch, and uh, he's a member of the club, is what I said. Those are my exact words. And he goes, he goes, what club? Could you hand me the... Comedy drums, please. Uh, this is important. The comedy drums make things funnier. He goes, I said, he's a member of the club. And Neil said, what club? And I said, the hair club. Because he had a very obvious toupee. Mm-hmm. And <clears throat> so Neil laughed, and that was, uh, that was pretty much the end of that. And then we go on the air, and Neil says, Howard David was just in the studio. Now, we didn't know anything about this guy at the time. We, under no circumstances, knew that this was the most serious, about-himself, humorless individual that ever lived, going all the way back to Egyptian pharaohs. No one in existence, and I'm not exaggerating, no one took themselves more seriously than this guy. No one in the, in, in the history of the human experience uh, had less of a sense of humor about themselves as this guy, which is perfect for Neil. So, um, Samo goes, um, 
So Neil gets on the air and says, uh, Howard David was just in here, met Howard David, and George said that he's a doddering old man who wears lime green pants. He's, he's a fat, doddering old man who wears lime green pants and has a toupee that is so bad that uh, it looks like it's going to run away. And, I said, and I'm like, I did not say that. You said, <laughs> and, and Neil goes, you said that he has a toupee that looks like a dead muskrat and uh, maybe it's not even dead. This is what, now I said, I did not say any of those things. And, and, and Neil said, did you say that he has, that you, you said that he has a bad, that he wears a bad wig. I said, I did not say he wears a bad wig. Because you told me he wears a toupee. And I said, well, yes, I did tell you that he wears a toupee. And, and you said, is it obvious? And there's like silence. Neil said, ask me, is it obvious? And there was silence. I'm the part, and I, I went, and eventually, <laughs> I answered, and I said, well, yeah. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yes. I wasn't going to lie. Yeah, it's obvious. It was like two different colors. I mean, <laughs> the toupee in his hair, like he had gone gray, and the toupee was still brown, and it was big and boofy. Anyway, look ridiculous is what he did. So <clears throat> immediately, immediately, he went ape shit. immediately immediately at Neil, at me, immediately, the campaign to, to fired to have us killed began right then and there, have us killed. But almost immediately, he found out that, that Neil Rogers' contract is, is ironclad, ironclad, that Neil could walk into, fly down from Toronto, walk into the middle of the show while Howard David is on the air and pee on his muskrat toupee, <laughs> and nothing would happen to him. Nothing would happen to him. So he tried to get Neil fired. And uh, that didn't work. When that didn't work, he... Um, took the opportunity to try to get me fired and almost did that. And everyone understands that. There's uh, the comedy bit, the Reed Inquisition, that, uh, that Boca Brian did about that. And that was, uh, came to be known as Email Gate, the big thing. We all had public email. Every, the station had assigned every show an email address. And nobody ever actually used it. But the guys, the producers the, at night, would go in and read all of the email that came into everyone's respective show. All right. On one particular occasion, they f- were reading Howard David's emails, and there were about eight of them that were very funny that responded to something that Howard was saying about Neil. And they were all saying, hey, lighten up, hey, get a sense of humor, things of those nature. And some of them were, were funny, barbed. Uh, they attacked him. So anyway, um, Joe Castello printed the emails up, and they started making their way around the radio station. All right. Miguel Escobar. Miguel Escobar is the one that threw me under the bus. I just want everyone to know. Uh, uh, What's Greg, his name again? Miguel Escobar, Looking my good friend, uh, handed me the emails. I read them before I even got to email number four. I was already in stitches. So just as I'm reading them, I'm feeding them into the fax machine and sending them to Neil. That's the whole show that day. All right. That became Howard David said, George Rodriguez hacked my email account, downloaded all. I searched through all of my emails in my inbox, found eight that were negative, and gave those to Neil Rogers, and they read them on the air. They violated my privacy. I'm going to sue. Greg Reed did an inquisition, talked to everybody about who gave the emails to Neil. He asked me, and I said, no. You know why? Because fuck you, Greg Reed, all right? (laughs) Fuck you with Satan's dick. Anyway, because Greg Reed is a shithead. Fuck you man i don't even give a fuck anymore fuck you greg reed anyway um that's why and i said no i don't know anything about that get the fuck out of my studio you goofball and um and so uh, it was miguel escobar who told greg reed who that he gave me the emails and he saw me fax them to neil miguel thank you my good friend miguel also thank you for hooking me up with larry the amigo milian another fuckhead so anyway um so there it is. So that, because that was actual an actual thing, then Greg Reed's like, I don't really care that he faxed Neil the emails, that, but he lied to me about it. He lied to me about it. I can't have an employee here lying to you about it. Everybody in that building lied to you, Greg. Everybody in that building lied to you, including uh, your wife, all right? Everybody. Nobody liked you, all right? Everybody was just faking it because you're the freaking general manager. And I'm just keeping track of the time over here because I'm gonna I'm gonna go out with a uh, with a mobit. As a matter of fact, the mobit that I'm going to play is is where the doy 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 came from. And if people want to know why we called him Mo, 
when Neil and I were uh, uh, having some fun with him, it came up. Neil and I were talking about him one day, <clears throat> and he said, "Who? I don't even know." It's like, and who the hell ever heard of Howard David anyway? And I said, "I don't know. Uh, I've heard of Howard Dean, and that started a." Uh, and Neil says, "Yeah." Howard Dean, I've heard of Howard Hughes. And then I responded, Neil and I would do that. We would do wordplay every now and again. So that got into a back and forth. We were just naming Howards. You know, Neil would name a Howard, I would name a Howard. And finally I ran out of, you know, we had Howard Dean, Howard Hughes, Howard the Duck. We All the first name Howards we ran out. I said, Mo Howard. And he said, and he laughed and he said, Curly Howard. And I said, that's great, Curly Howard. That's perfect because he's bald. And he goes, no, I like Mo Howard better because of the hair. And I said, I like Curly Howard better. And he goes, which one looks like he's wearing a wig? And I said, Mo. And he goes, Mo it is. And so he uh, he did that. I got the end music. I got the end bit, actually, Jack. So you can kill that. I'm just going to go from there into a into a Mo bit, and uh, and we can uh, we can hit the ID from there. But that that's the story. Yes, Mo Howard David tried to get Neil fired, but that was immediately immediately. Uh, abandoned that campaign was immediately abandoned in favor of the let's fuck with neil by getting george fired uh campaign which was um almost successful because greg he greg reed hated me too the feelings mutual greg hope you're having a good time and with that thank you flash thank you christine for schlepping all the way up here through the driving rain through the flash isn't driving driving rain <laughs> Don't forget Everglades Benefit Concert tomorrow. Gramps starts at like four. Four in the afternoon. Four in the afternoon. In the Gramps, ten dollars. Get your tickets at ploppypalace.com or at the door, right? Yes. You just go there right at the door and it's in the Winwood section. Gramps is at eight seventy six. Is that right? Can I read that right? No, actually no. It's so uh, one one seventy six. Oh, if that's a one? Yeah. I know. Okay. <clears throat> one seventy six. I uh, it's a, you know, I am over fifty. I can't read small print. One, one, one seven six. One seven six. It sure as hell Northwest, doesn't look like one. One seven twenty fourth. Thank no, you. No, I just messed it you, up more. One seventy six Northwest twenty fourth Street, Miami, in the Winwood section. And there's also a Facebook thing. Yeah, there's a Facebook event page. And also, if people want to donate to the Love the Everglades movement, go to GoFundMe.com/slash Love the Everglades. Ain't that great? The GoFundMe. All GoFundMe is really all good. ages, and all ages. this is perpetuating. And cultivating awareness to keep on going, so that Beautiful. there's eight, nine, I, ten, I 11, I am going 12. to make a concerted effort to uh, twist my daughter's arm, but as, as I told you, she's uh, very particular and uh, and very difficult to manage. I would have to start the campaign. I'll start the campaign as soon as I pick her up today. And yes, it's a short show, ladies and gentlemen, because I am going to take her to a kitty party. Good. And I'm excited to go because it's at the roller rink. And yes, I skate. Would you like to come skating with me sometime? You know, yeah. not a bad it, idea. It, 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 it re rejuvenated me mentally too because I can't see how old I am when I'm out there. I feel like a teenager again. Yeah, getting my health Forward, back. Forward, backwards, and do shuffle? All, all of it. It's, 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 you don't know. You don't know. I don't know. I'm, Pretty amazing. Okay. Pretty, Thank you. Know. All right. All right. Great. Sounds like a date. Can't wait. But let's uh, on the other side of the Everglades concert because I know you guys will have like a lot of money counting to do. Hopefully. Thank you, Christine. Thank you, Flash. Here is the uh, the bit where the doi 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 came from. Am I up? I don't want to be uh, broadcasting into silence here. Doi 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 doi. And that's why I think the Jets will have a championship season. The Jets? And what did I tell you? You don't talk till I say you can talk. This is the beast. I said shut up, fatso. But you're like a father to me. You don't talk till I'm done talking. When I'm done talking, then you talk. Okay, I'll... Hey, beast, come here. What? Come here. I want you to meet a friend of mine, Mr. Golf Club. <laughs> Why, I ought to... <laughs> I'm going to show you the business end of this thing. Come here. <laughs> this court sentences you to 20 years in Oz. <laughs> What'd you info? I, uh, tore the tag off my mattress. Uh, looks like we'll be, uh, bunkmates. Uh, the name's Mo Howard David. Star of stage, screen, and paradise. Uh, what's yours? Nick owes me coffee. Hmm, you got so tan. Right, thank you. Uh, hey, look at that. What are you doing? So powder and drill, right. honey. I'm gonna make you my woman. Ain't nobody's gonna stop him. You God! God! Hold God! Hold still, Pinky! All right, shower time. You got ten minutes. Well, it ought to be safe in here. Yo, bow tie. Yo, man. Get a load of our new Linda Blair over there. Hey, so it's pretty. Oh, man. Okay. Hey, don't embarrass me like that. Let's Do you know who I am? Okay, man. Bend over and pick it up now. Oh, oh, broom, shit. All right. But I expect a written apology on my desk Give Monday. Give that broom handle, bow tie. Say hello, broom handle. I'll take the front. The Warden will 
see you now. Thanks. Well, Mr. David. Hello, Warden. Oh, Jack. Jack Warden. How can I help you? Well, you see, Warden. Yes? I keep getting raped. Oh, isn't that a shame? I'll look into it right away. Thanks, Warden. It's about time, somebody. But now drop your pad. Huh? I said drop your pad. This is Oz. Fa- <laughs> Favors don't come cheap. <laughs> yo, yo, yo. Let's rape Mo. Radio Big Shot. That's how we pass the time away in the gay old jail of Oz. From high atop 1926 Hollywood Boulevard, you're listening to SoFloRadio.com.